Okay. If you'll please uh, join me, we're going to open up the workshop and we will do the Pledge of Allegiance, if that's okay with everybody. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right can I have roll call, please? Yes. Right. Um, Councillor Litke? Here. Councillor Tenbush? Here. Councillor Strobel? Here. Councillor Gates? Here. Councillor Hughes? Here. Councillor Dunsmere? Here. And Mayor Drinkwine? Here. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. As far as my opening remarks, I just want to thank uh, staff immediately for this workshop and the fact that they did a wonderful lunch and brought it to all of us. That's above and beyond. I didn't expect that. And I want to thank all of them for that. And Melanie, I want to thank you personally for bringing that to us all. Um, and I want us to be clear on today's workshop that we must be civil to each other and keep within line of getting along. Uh, it's, it's a new year. It's a new council, you know, not new as in people, but new as in new year. So please, let's keep this on an even kill. Let's get through this workshop, do some great work. And um, that's all I have. So thank you for that. Now, we are at the infrastructure discussion. And I will hand that off to you, Melanie. Is that right? Yes, that would be great. We're going to have um, our public works director, Don DeRocha, start first, and then we'll move to a report from our plant operations director, Chris Lewis. And um, they've kind of done a bullet point um, report to go in your packet. And we pretty much are keeping this short and sweet and just want to answer any questions that you have. And um, so I'll let Don take it away. Okay. Hello, my name is Don. I'm the Public Works Director. Uh, I kind of made the bullet points. I don't know if you guys have a copy of it. Um, we'll go over the Public Works projects. We finished uh, Overlook Park up there in the Oakview subdivision with the concrete work, all the grade work. We made it handicapped accessible. Got all the playground equipment and the bark chips blown in. So that was kind of, that was like the first project I was able to be a part of, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're, I'm trying to, every year, we're going to try to pave a new street in town. And so we started off with ginseng because it was pretty bad. There's potholes everywhere. It was alligators. So we uh, had, um, I can't remember the company, East Side Paving, I think. They came out and they grinded off the top layer. A lot of it they had to take out and dig out. And then they overlaid it with pavement. And then the U.S. Bank had a, we have a sewer main going in their parking lot basically. And it's kind of our alley through there. And the main was just really bad. There was a bunch of uh, I and I in there with groundwater going into the pipe. And uh, we had a bunch of clogging problems there. So we just went and replaced the entire thing, including the manholes. We added new manholes just to, there's that empty lot next to it. So if it ever develops, we upsized everything to six inch because it's in the downtown commercial area. So we did that. Um, we did the 6th and Main Street intersection. We put a bike lane there, made a safe place for kids to get on and off the bus. Uh, we kind of tightened the corner, but I think it actually turned out pretty well. I mean, somebody did clip the pole recently, but other than that, I think it's been pretty good. Uh, and then the other projects were unforeseen ones. We had the ice storm in last February. That was a big chunk of our time for a while. And then uh, we had an emergency repair back in January or February of a 12 inch water main behind uh, the metal place on Park Avenue. I can't remember their name. Uh, we worked from about 10 o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the morning. We had four guys out there, including myself, re replacing the main. And so we're just trying to get the industrial campus back up and going. Uh, does anybody have any questions about any of that? No, no, I don't have any. Uh, does anybody in the group have a question? 
Uh, Katie? Uh, not really a question about any of the public works projects that you just spoke about, but um, I, and I hope I'm not jumping ahead of you, but I was just looking at the subdivisions uh, bullet points and that's, that's next. Are you gonna be yep. talking about that at all? Uh, not, I mean, I, I'll go over it a little bit, but it's kind of just, it is. Yeah, well, is. so, <laughs> so my main question is, I, I don't believe that these are all of the subdivisions that are currently uh, approved. I think there's a couple that are missing, including like the Dugan Estates. Am I correct yeah. in that? Or is... Yeah, so okay, these are the so... ones that are actually like broke ground, they're building streets, infrastructure and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So uh, that's what my question really was leading to was yep. what was the significance of uh, including these subdivisions and yep. not some of the other ones that have been approved. So, yeah, so um, but these ones are the ones that have broken ground and you guys are working with them to actually yep. work on the streets and stuff. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So like Cascadia 6 is just gravel right now. I think they have sewer in. Uh, Faraday Hills 1 is completely done and they're almost built out which means that all 99 of those lots, we have to go out. I think we did like 390 something building permits last year. So that's mm -hmm. 390 meters we have to install. It's getting really expensive. Um, but like Faraday Hills 2, that's the one connecting in the back canyon to Cascadia 6. So it's gonna loop from Curran Creek Drive all the way out to Deuce. So this March, maybe this early summer, you'll probably see that done. Uh, Can you remind me, is that the one that connects right there at Hinman or is that the one that goes all the way out to Deuce? That's the one that goes all the way out to Deuce. Okay, perfect. This will connect to Deuce. And I, I think Dugan Estates might be Hinman. I'm okay. not I'm not sure though. I gotta look at the maps. <clears throat> and then Curran Creek Estates too, they're just kind of plugging away near Lawrence. And then industrial campus number three, phase one's being worked on, and phase two is gonna be right after that one. So is the idea then that by the end of this year, uh, that uh, cemetery will go all the way to Deuce? Yes, pretty much. Through wow, that's fantastic. Okay, very exciting. Thank you very much for that update. Yep. It won't be, it won't be straight shot off the end of cemetery though, right? It'll be, no, you'll go no. up and it'll go off Curran it'll, Creek all the way. It'll go off the canyon, Curran Creek Drive. And okay. Curran Creek's kind of the main thoroughfare. And I think it's going to end up connecting to like River Mill right across from that. If I remember correctly. Right. And then uh, we got 2022 planned for the rest of this year. We have the Wade Street from the library to 6th Street. It's the SCA project. We're going to be paving. As of right now, it's just pavement, gravel, nothing. It's going to be pavement, curbs, and some sidewalks on both sides a little bit. We're going to finish the sidewalk on the Wade Creek Park side to give the kids a nice area and a safe place to walk there. And then uh, on the other side, we're just gonna kind of give the groundwork for putting a curb there and having structure there to where we don't have any more gravel. And then we're replacing a lot of the sewer mains. I think majority of the sewer mains in the mill, we're gonna be slip lining, which basically they're gonna take pipe inside of the pipe and cook it in and it's gonna expand. And so you're gonna have a brand new pipe in there to get rid of I and I. And then we're just going to keep on chugging away at installing radio read meters. That's been a big, we bought all the meters when Tom was here. And the problem is the building permits and they were building too many houses and we had to use all that stock for that. So now we're just kind of playing catch up. And I talked to Sadie this year and we're going to try to get the remaining like 400 meters changed out this next budget year and then try to stay ahead of the ball. To where the whole town will be read from a computer in a truck and that is it okay uh don yeah, go ahead paul oh uh, for the mill property why what's the purpose for for replacing those again you said to get rid of some i and i but what's going on there what what will it do ultimately it's gonna create a lot less work and flow at the wastewater plant we have so much i and i in that property through there even the water mains we have really bad water mains in there that it's creating our wastewater plant more work more flow we're paying a lot more money to treat groundwater right now and so we're going to try to alleviate that by fixing all the problem spots around town and we're starting with that one because it's not affected by public so we gotcha. can there and do what we got to do quickly so you and that's think start at the library pond and go all the way to the highway. Okay. And you would think that if the 
pipes are old and a little leaky, the concern would be leaking out. But what happens is the groundwater leaks in and then that runs straight to the sewer plant. And then Chris has so much water to treat that is, it's just groundwater. It should be running off like into the storm system. But so that will, that's a lot of pipe in there on the mill property and should help cut down water that we're treating and that doesn't need to be treated. Okay. Hey, Don, I had a question for you. Um, are there any plans in the new future uh, for like 4th Street and areas that get a lot of traffic for all the new developments? They're starting to get a, lot, you know, a, a pretty serious amount of damage from all the trucks that are on them. Yep. And I don't think sealing the cracks is going to hold them forever. Yep. Is there any plans to do any kind of sealant or anything on those to prevent as of, that? As of right now, sealant's like the number one maintenance we can do on those roads. And where I was, was going to try to go get with Kurt a little bit and kind of categorize some of our streets because you have like good, fair, and poor. And mm -hmm. I'm just trying to knock the poor ones out and keep up on the fair ones with the crack sealing. I think we crack sealed two years ago. Yeah. So we're probably going to need to crack seal again this year just because there's a lot of traffic up there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, Charity. Yeah, just a quick question, just to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying. So are you, there's a, there's a line going across 4th and Oakview. Is that, um, is that, are you guys doing a traffic study there or I was just curious? Yes, it's, we're trying to see how much traffic's going up there. I think we had talked, we were trying to get a new traffic counter that kind of does speed and end cars. Cause right now we're just getting volume and mm -hmm. the volume doesn't really speak as much as speed. I think that's gotcha. the main concern right now is the speed going down that hill. Yes. So gotcha. yeah, we're just, we're trying to collect data, see how much traffic we actually have going up there and not going down Carroll. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Joel, you have a question? Uh, so one of the things we've been getting more questions on kind of building off of charities a little bit too is uh, people have been asking about speed bumps around town. Do we yep. have any streets that are planned for speed bumps currently now, or are we just starting to get the traffic study so we can get those in? No, nope, no plans for any speed bumps right now. I think that's part of the reason why we're counting traffic and stuff like that, trying to find a viable way. I think what's going to happen is you're going to have to have some sort of a structure, basically like a plan to even see if we can put speed bumps in places. I did a little research from different cities that have them and they have a bunch of criteria you got to hit to be able to do it. But I think if we get the traffic control plan, is that what it's called? The TSP traffic yeah. study. And uh, we kind of get, put our heads down and do some work. We can probably lay some infrastructure and groundwork down for speed bumps. Uh, Katie, you have another question? Yeah, uh, I believe Public Works, you're the right person to bring this up to. Um, are, is there any plan for planting plants in the, uh, um, like the center median right there on the highway when you're yeah. the, uh, the welcome sign? Okay, yeah, so there is a plan for that. We've contacted a couple different uh, nurseries to try to get that going. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a call back. <laughs> so. But yeah, yeah, it is planned. Even the long, we want to do the long sides too, in the middle. And then I think eventually it'd be cool if we can do the uh, parking lot by the fire department, kind of tie it all together. Is is there a planned date of completion for that? No, I have nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joel, another question? Yeah, this was actually off of the previous question I had. Um, if we have to have TSPs and stuff in place, how will we able to get, like, uh, I think Shafford had a bunch of speed bumps on it and stuff. How will we able to get those in place if we have to have them for other roads? I'm just, if you could explain how that works out, because I'm getting the same question, actually, and I don't have an answer for them, so I'm hoping someone else can. Someone that might, can that right might be a Kurt question. And so when we did Shafford, that whole street, because it was restructured and engineered, um, they were able to engineer the street, uh, the um, speed humps into that road. Um, I know we're getting a lot of questions and continued um, questions, especially from coming down that the Oakview Road up and down. I think they're concerned about the speed. Um, and we're probably a year out on that TSP. And I feel like um, we don't want to rush into something, but I think they need to have some kind of a, a response as to, you know, what is it even looking like it's feasible? Um, because I know for years, people on Lakeshore have been asking for speed humps down there. 
um, and it's not something that we've ever been able to there to do. We just haven't done that. And we should have some criteria so that we don't have speed humps all over our town. Um, because I know wherever, you know, any, all those residential streets, um, it'd be nice if people would voluntarily slow down on them a little bit. Um, but so maybe one thing that we could do is like the council could give staff direction to um, get some equipment that would measure speed. And so we would know, um, is it just perception um, or is it act is there actually a, a concern that we need to make this section, this section of street safer? Um, that might help give us some data and, and Don's doing those traffic counts to see um, what it is. We have sent our deputies up there on different occasions and say, hey, we're getting several complaints. Um, can you go check it out? And of course, then they, it's hard to sit there that long um, through, you know, that it would take. So maybe there's some other ideas also for slowing traffic. I know on a hill, that's a little trickier than on a flat road like Lakeshore, probably pretty ideal just from my non-engineering standpoint. Um, but on a hill, on that slope and on a corner, um, we probably would have to get some engineering done. So I don't know, I guess feedback from council on how much do you want us to look into this before that TSP is done? Okay. Jerry, do you have something? Um, how expensive are those uh, that like the digital sign that is at the um, coming down uh, Copeland sixth, how, uh, how expensive are those signs? And, you know, would it be possible to put those, you know, maybe in some of those locate a couple of those locations, if they're not super expensive, I mean, that might be a, you know, just that vis visual reminder, you know, that sign blinking at them, telling them to slow down, um, you know, something like that might, might be helpful. Um, you know, I, I know it's just, it's a neighborhood, it should be 20, 25 miles per hour, but, you know, a lot of people are, you know, don't, they don't see it that way. They, they see open road in front of them. They just want to go. Yeah. Joel. Oh, go ahead. I'm actually kind of building off what Jerry is talking about. Um, if anyone's ever driven through uh, down division over in Gresham area, they actually have a sign there that uh, not only shows your speed, but it also will take a photo radar picture of you if you're speeding. And so the a ticket can be sent over if people are speeding. And those are actually put up by third party companies that they what they they pay for all the equipment to go into it and then when it happens they send it to the city the city then uh issues a fine and gives a i think the company gets like a fee or something like that for it i don't know the full works it's something for me to look into for these areas where we're seeing a lot more heavier speeding if we can't somehow engineer to get speed bumps in there um something that you know that might be we can put in like a photo radar or something like that that um won't cost the city money except for you know uh, a share in fines or something like that but something to at least look into i think uh, gresham's the one that i know for a fact has them i think twalton also has them as well we can um i don't want to stuff. uh we can talk to them and uh and see you know what they're doing maybe there might be something we can do without uh, expense to the people but at the same time meet the same goals so I don't remember how much those signs were the when we put the speed signs up by the library and by Copeland, but they were they were relatively reasonable and they're supposed to give us feedback that that system didn't work as well. But maybe um, or even if we had a portable like we have the portable trailer that we can move around and it tells people their speed. Um, but it doesn't give us feedback so we can say, hey, we do have a speed problem here, but we could look into that if that's kind of a consensus that you want us to find some other options on data. I have heard that it's actually those speed signs that give you where drivers see how fast they're going do actually help a lot versus the, you know, putting the structure of a speed hump in there. And, and two, I've noticed that um, the key areas that I really worry about are near the schools. I mean, if you go in front of River Mill now, um, now that we've punched through in Campanella and that road goes straight through, I've been sitting out there in the parking lot and watched the cars rip past there going, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour in an area where it could go through a house, it could hit a child. I mean, that's just, there's no end to it. Not to mention the buses coming in and out. So maybe our focus should be uh, right around the school area. So like when you cross from the high school, they have a crosswalk there, they have a speed gauge there, but I've also seen a lot of speeding on the off time that there are still kids out there. So 
I don't think that's really working to the advantage. So if we could concentrate it maybe in the school zones, the school areas around the schools as a trial area, because that's flat there, River Mill's flat. Um, it would seem to me that maybe that would be a good area. You know, even uh, Cascadia Ridge over there, that's, that's flat as well in front of that. So I don't know, it's just something to think about. Uh, Joel? Since you bring it up, one of the things we're going to be looking at doing some of the roads there by the uh, schools, by River Mill, River Mill in that area, that road, we have some, a lot more traffic going through there. I know there's really no segregation between like where the parking lot begins and ends. And when I first drove through there, like when I first, very first brand new to the area, I didn't realize I, I, I was driving through the parking lot thinking that was part of the road until, until I realized later that it's looped around and I, I learned us Takeda. We should probably do something to paint lines or something because we had a lot of new people moving in. And if people rushing through there, you don't want them to be rolling into parking lots or something. This is something that's segregated out. So that's an idea. That's a good idea. Maybe that is something that we could circle back around with if we talk about a public safety committee later on. Um, and maybe there, you know, we need to determine what that public safety committee would be tasked, tasked with. Is it just um, with our police services or is there other safety issues like that in town that they would be tasked with too? But those are good questions. Gary. So this is probably something that we'll have to go into that public safety um, thing. But um, until we until we actually start the uh, the Main Street project, um, I think that we need to do something about lighting coming down the coming down the hill um, right there at that intersection. Um, Cause at twilight, twilight and beyond, I mean, it, it is so hard to see anybody um, crossing that crosswalk. The crosswalk's great, but um, you know, if you can't see the people that are crossing it, especially coming down the hill, uh, going up the hill isn't as bad, but coming down the hill, there's blind spots um, to either side where you can't see the pedestrians coming towards the crosswalk. Um, so lighting in that area would pro should probably be something that's addressed. You know, I, I know it's going to be addressed during the Main Street, Main Street project, but um, you know, getting that addressed, you know, at least in the interim, getting something in place there would be uh, huge, would be beneficial, so. Great, great. Uh, Katie? Um, I know that several months ago, we had spoken as a council about uh, having a lighting inventory taken or like uh, identifying pub or the, the poles that are throughout the city and identifying which ones have uh, street lamps and which ones don't. Uh, how far have we gotten in that that particular project, Melanie? Um, I was just kind of curious because like, I know back when we had that conversation, uh, Denise had mentioned that PGE was going to be working on bringing some power or some street lamps into the uh, Lakeshore neighborhood and that still hasn't been done yet. So I was just kind of curious what else has been done in terms of uh, adding lighting to the city. Yes, we have. I haven't really worked on the inventory, like laying out the maps. I'd like to do that and highlight, you know, where there's street lights at. Um, I did get maps from PGE, and P I did. Um, PGE had told us, you know, we'd done a little work order for them to put lights on the poles on Elm and the ones on Lakeshore that did not have lights. Um, somehow that didn't happen, and I checked back with them just two or three weeks ago to ask, you know, when it was going to happen, and it. I think it kind of fell through the cracks on their part because um, he was very apologetic that it hadn't happened yet and he was going to get it get it moving forward. So um, I think those are in the works. The rest of as far as a um, like a street lighting audit, that's something that I haven't worked on yet, but could if that's maybe part of the goals we want to look at if you want to direct us to do that. So. Okay. Um. So do we have anything else to public works? We can move on to the next section if that's okay, but I'll, I'll see if there's any more hands. Not seeing any. So we will move on to uh, 2022 planned. What do we have planned in 2022? Or, Is that where we're at? Is that, I'm, I'm, I got lost here. Um, we were gonna have Chris <laughs> give a little report okay. on his, his section of public work, okay. um, right? Yeah. And then we'll right. move on to, to the, our community development staff after that with library and planning. So Chris. 
Okay. Uh, Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, here's a quick update on the treatment plants. We'll start with the water. Um, in 2021, we produced 250 million gallons of drinking water. That was up from 223 in 2020. Um, we installed new equipment like turbidimeters on some filters and we painted the filters of exteriors one and two. Uh, we're still doing post-fire water quality sampling and we're doing that with Clackamas River water providers. Um, we installed some new chemical tanks because the old ones were deteriorating pretty bad. We made it through the chlorine shortage last summer, which was kind of scary, but we were okay. Um, I'm starting to purchase some critical equipment like motor starters and chemical pumps and high service pumps and filter pumps. Just in case we have one go down in the summertime, we have backups so we can keep going full bore because we don't have enough time to be down half the plant for a week or something like that in the summertime. Um, I think it's time we start looking into a water treatment plant facility update with our engineers and come up with some kind of a plan. Our water rights in the river are 2.6 million gallons per day and we can produce 1.8, about 1.8 in 24 hours. And our peak days last summer were 1.3. But those peak days last three to four months out of the year. So it's not like one day we're maxed out. It's, it goes all summer long. So I've been talking with the engineers. They're on board with developing a plan so we can get that going. Um, our UV project is underway at the water treatment plant and our high level pump station is underway at the end of Espinosa Street. And that's about it for water. If anybody has any questions for water. Yeah, um, I think I have one. Um, was the new um, generator installed for the backup on that, that water system? Uh, yes. that, yeah, okay, that's all been done and it's all yeah. working perfectly and good, yeah. good, and excellent. That powers half of the treatment plant so we can produce 1 million gallons in a power outage per day. Good, excellent, thank that's you. Nice. Uh, any other questions? For Chris on the water plant? No? Oh, J Paul, what do you got? So Chris, for the um, facility update, is that is that similar to what we're looking for at for the wastewater treatment plant with a whole new location, a whole new uh, plant, or, or are we looking to do more updates within the plant itself? Um, Updates within the plant itself just increase the equipment and capacity because we have our water rights in the river, which is right there. So upgrade some pumps, maybe the size of some filters so that we can produce that much in a day. And that should get us by for the next few years until, until yeah, we keep growing and need to do something more. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Katie, do you have something? Um, well, I'm glad to hear that Estacada made it through the uh, chlorine shortage just fine. I know that there was a, a it was kind of touch and go for a lot of cities there for a while. Um, with the uh, upgrade plan, or you know, the upgrade suggestion for the uh, water treatment plant, um, I would I learned during that chlorine shortage that there's a lot of cities that actually don't use chlorine in treating their water. Is that something that Estacada is hoping to move toward? Or are we hoping to just kind of update the system that we already have in place? Uh, it would just be kind of be nice if we could move for, away from the chlorine treatment. Mm -hmm. And then that way, if we have another shortage that we're not as affected by it, like other cities weren't affected by it at all. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're doing with our UV project. That is a way of treating the water without using chlorine, but we're still gonna to have to use a little bit of chlorine because according to the state regulations, we have to maintain a certain residual out in the system, which is very minimum. I mean, it just has to be a trace. As long as our bacteriological samples are coming back good, then we'll be okay. So we'll be able to run it a lot lower than we are now with the UV system online. Cool. Okay, Joel. I 
kind of uh, two questions here. The first one is, can you give us more details on the post-fire water water quality, how that's looking and coming out? And then the second part is, you said we have a peak of 2.6 is what we have rights up to. Um, I know that we probably have a pretty wide band till we get to that. Just out of curiosity, what is our plan when, if we ever get grow to the size where that we're hitting that peak? What do we have? What do we do at that point? Well, I guess we'd have to apply at the state to increase our water rights within the Clackamas River. And I don't really know how we would go about that. We would reach out to other cities and see if they've ever gone through something like that. Kind of I'm across sure the bridge when we get like to it. Lower Clackamas. I'm sure they've increased somehow. You just got to get it permitted. Gotcha. And our water quality sampling, we're just testing for TOC, which is total organic compounds. And it's just organic compounds coming down the raw the river and then we just test the raw and it's just once a week and it's been very minimal nothing really out of the ordinary like right now our water is super clean super clear so there's nothing in it right now We're, we try to do a storm sample you know when we get a turbidity event but it's got to be hit certain days of the week and we haven't really seen anything too critical from the fire itself nothing really out of the ordinary Excellent. And two other treatment plants downriver are doing the same thing, and we're comparing results. Good, good. Any more questions about the water treatment? No? Okay, we can move to the next part of that. Okay, let's do the wastewater plant. Oh, we treated 238 million gallons in 2021, which was up from the previous year. The biggest thing with our wastewater plant right now is our biosolids production. We created 810,000 gallons of biosolids. We only have 140,000 gallons of storage. And we cannot haul biosolids onto local fields in the wintertime. So we're running into a brick wall there. So I made an agreement with Water Environment Services to haul our solids to them at a cost of 10 cents a gallon. So when we're hauling 70,000 gallons in a week, it can get kind of spendy. And another way of we're doing that, we're using our own trucks and our trucks are super old and rinkety and we don't really have the manpower to keep that up for very much longer. So I'm working with another company, a trucking company to haul it for us, which is gonna cost more, but we really don't have any other options at this point. Um, I'm working up a backup plan with clean water services out at their Durham plant in Tigard. It's a long ways out there, but there's no other big wastewater plants that'll accept our sludge. So I'm working on an IGA with them right now to get that hopefully finished this week. So we can try doing some hauling to them. But other than that, I mean, that's the biggest issue is our biosolids right now in the capacity. Okay. Um, any questions regarding the treatment, uh, Katie? Uh, I have two questions. First, have we gotten any updates from the DEQ about our proposal? Not that I've seen. Okay. Um, my second question is kind of a, a left fielder for you. Um, I've heard of other municipalities actually testing their wastewater to uh, track COVID-19 outbreaks. I was kind of curious about if Estacada has done any sort of uh, testing of the wastewater to, uh, to test for COVID-19 at all. Um, I guess that was my big question, was whether or not Estacada was doing anything like that. We haven't. I've kind of thought about looking into doing that, but... I would have to ask the lab that we use to see if they even do that kind of thing. And if not, maybe reach out to another one. I, is that I, something that is that something that you guys would be interested in? And I'm thinking, you know, long term, I've seen a lot of arguments for that being a really effective way of uh, sort of tracking community outbreaks, especially as we move into the, you know, the new normal, right, moving forward past uh, the pandemic stage. And is that something that you guys at the wastewater treatment plant would be interested in and capable of doing if that was something that we as a city decided was important for us to track? If we as a city decide it's important, then we can probably do that. But right now, I'm not really. 
I haven't really thought that much about it, testing the wastewater for COVID, no. Okay, I was just curious. Thank you, I appreciate your input on it. Okay, some other questions on the treatment? I'm not seeing any hands. So we thank you, Chris. It was a good report and thank you for keeping us informed on both the water and the treatment. We appreciate that. And we'll look in ways to make your job a little easier as we move along here in our budget. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'll let um, Chris, unless you guys think you might have more questions as we go through the library and planning, we'll let Chris and Don go and, sure. um, Okay, and if you have other questions come up, I can definitely check back with them and get answers for you later. But um, I just want you to know, they do a really good job. They take a lot of pressure um, that people just, you don't think about it. You know, you live your life and you expect things to be how they are. And there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to, to keep the streets and the parks and the pipes and the, the water going and wastewater. You know, it's like, where does water come from? I don't know. I turn on my tap and it comes out. And um, you know, there's a lot of things that people don't think about, and these guys take the pressure for that. Are doing a really good job. So, thanks that's for, right. You two are wonderful. Don't ever for, think we don't think I that. Don't. All we of us up here it. need that water and need everything else that goes with it. So we appreciate mm -hmm. you, and we've never forgotten how important you are. So we thank you for everything you do. All right. All right. No, you can go ahead and do this one. Okay. Say goodbye to Chris and Dawn, and now Michelle. Bye, -bye guys. Yeah, Michelle is with us from the library. She's on the phone, so we can't see her, but hopefully um, she can unmute herself or I might need to, I'm not sure. Okay. I'll click, I can ask her to unmute. Mm. There she goes. Okay. Perfect. Hi everybody. How uh, are you, Amy? Yes. Okay, great. Um, hey, so I didn't have a report for you, uh, I guess on Thursday when they got sent out, but I did email everybody a report Friday at the end of the day. Has everyone received that? Yes, we have, thank you. Okay, so I just wanna go over a few things that we did accomplish last year. Uh, not everything, but if there are things on the list you wanna ask about, I can answer those. Uh, so the library did resume uh, in-person library service with a few restrictions back in April of 2021. And then by June, we were able to completely open with full browsing and um, more, you know, just letting people in and do more things. Um, by September, we did add an evening and Saturday hours again. Uh, also, in the last year, we hired three new circulation staff to help us out with um, those extra hours. Um, trying to think of other things that we did as far as uh, library service. I just want to remind people that we were open to the public for most of the COVID shutdowns, so we were open in April of 2020 for curbside pickup. Uh, also last year, we did do a brick sale fundraiser for the Wade Creek Park community room. We raised about $6,000. We'd have to subtract a little bit to pay the person that did the job, but that's um, roughly five over $5,000, excuse me, 4,500 roughly that we were able to contribute to that project. Uh, in addition to the Friends of the Estacada Public Library that contributed uh, 15000 for our furnishings of that facility. Uh, we were, in July, super excited to learn that we were awarded an American Rescue Plan Act that was a competitive grant from the federal government, and that was administrated by the State Library of Oregon uh, to buy an outreach van slash bookmobile. And we're looking forward to getting that on the road sometime in late spring. How much was that grant for, Michelle? It was $102,000. Way to go. That's what I like to hear. You're doing great. Thank you. Um, just a few other things we, we've done. 
throughout the year. Um, we're, we have quite a few partners, partnerships in town, Potos Tuntos, Ant Farm, the Food Bank, School District, Clackamas County Early Learning Hub are just a few people that, uh, organizations that we worked with last year and for a few years. Um, one kind of a cool thing we did was we hosted the preschool rain boot giveaway in collaboration with Clackamas County. We also um, are working with a program called Med Project. And that means that we are distributing postal envelopes that allow people to mail back unused prescription drugs. And we will have an in-person event sometime in the spring with uh, Officer Sarah McClurg from the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department so that people can bring things in person. Uh, we are not allowed to accept any um, drugs without um, a police officer on site. So we're excited to have her come and help us out with that. Then also last April, we ended up doing our electric vehicle webinar online. Uh, we had some big plans that were upended by COVID, but we can certainly do this again in the future. It was a collaboration with uh, Fourth Mobility and the Clackamas County Sustainability and Solid Waste Office. So those are just a few things. I mean, our staff has spent all of this time just continually trying to devise creative ways to serve the public over the course of the pandemic. Um, we have not been able to have the kind of in-person programming that we did before. So we've had a lot of take and make crafts and um, enhancements to the website, such as um, e-content like the New York Times Online, Creative Bug, Book flicks and uh, all our ebooks are still happening. We've still done a lot of work with kids and early learning. So we're just going to keep up with that. That's good work. Uh, uh, I do want to say... mention. Go ahead. I'm sorry, excuse me. Oh, I was going to say, have you seen a good return since you've opened your library back up on limited hours? Um, are you seeing a lot of people come back? We are seeing people come back. It is not the same as pre pre COVID though. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. I, I wish I could say it was, but it's it's not. All right. Well, it'll get there. It'll get there. Yeah, I really I really hope so. Looking forward to seeing people come back. Um, to that point, uh, I just wanted to point out something we did a couple of weeks ago, if I can. Sure. Uh, we did create a flyer to go in the water bill. And we knew that the water bill would go to all of the new homes and the new residents that have come in. So we just wanted to tell them, you know, we're out here and here's how to get a library card and here's our hours and here's some of the things we have. So really hoping it entices people to come in and check us out. And we actually are seeing quite a few new families come in and get library cards. Yeah, so we're yeah. really happy to, um, to meet them and to show them what we have. Well, I think uh, we have one question here, Jerry. What do you got? Um, so it, the the brick the brick fundraiser and then the the money that comes from the friends of the library. Um, I don't know if this question would be more for Melanie or for Michelle, but um, is that is that money since it is fundraising? Is that able to be included in that uh, the Ford Family Foundation match? Um, yes, it and, was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so not only did you guys, you know, uh, raise $4,500 in that brick, but that is doubled because of Ford family foundation. So that's, that's, that, that's even equally amazing. Uh, they don't, they don't match the big grants though, do they? They won't match that 102,000. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, um, it's amazing that the, that there is an organization out there like the Ford Family Foundation that is, uh, you know, matching any money that we're raising towards the Wade Creek um, Park project. So that's in the libraries. So that's amazing. Yeah, we're very happy about that. Very, very, very happy. All right. Any more questions for Michelle on the library? Well, again, Michelle, you and your staff have done a great job. And that library is looking better and better every day, that whole project out there. I'm excited to talk that around the county and state 
about how good your library is. So we thank appreciate you, all of you and all that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to talk about the library today. Well, thank you. We appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, Melanie, who's next? All right, next we have our city planner, Taylor Campy, and she's going to talk to you. She's actually, I, I guess, a planning manager. Um, it might be her official title right now. Um, but yeah, so she's here to share with us about what's going on in that arena. Lots going on in the office. So, and we do, I'll let her talk about Elena, but we did hire a new staff member there, but we're still down one. Um, although we've still tried to convince Matt to come back, but um, we'll find somebody. So Taylor, yeah. there, take it away. Thanks, Melanie. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure when when we would say the official merger happened of the economic development and planning departments, but it's all um, being captured under the community development department now. So, um, so that currently consists of um, myself and Elena, who um, is the new community development coordinator. And then I think technically, Melanie, I think you're like the default department director at this point. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's another position. We'll just see if a director or an economic development manager can be hired. Um, yeah, but Elena, um, so she's great. If you haven't met her, um, she brings a lot of experience working um, in and with rural communities um, and like supporting small businesses. Um, so she's just really knowledgeable. Um, yeah, we're excited to have her. She will be staffing the Downtown Estacada Commission um, and managing the Main Street program. And then of course, helping out with all kinds of other things at City Hall, as we all do, because um, we're such a small staff. Um, so yeah, and I did include in, I hope the links worked that were in this little summary bullet points. Um, if they didn't, let me know. I can send them out again. Um, but I just linked to the um, Main Street Programs 2021-22 plan, um, which is about as much of an update that I'm able to give on the Downtown Estacada Commission. But if any of you are curious um, or just want to talk to her about that, definitely give her a call. She has uh, Matt's new, you know, or Matt's old um, phone extension 206. So. Um, yeah, other things that happened in our department, um, and this was coordinated mostly by Matt, but the Vertical Housing Development Zone was established um, in April of last year. Um, as you all are probably familiar, uh, that's the tax abatement program that um, incentivizes upper, upper story, you know, second or third story um, dwelling units in like mixed mixed use buildings that would have like um, ground floor commercial. And that is a limited duration tax abatement. So um, at the end of the 10 year period, um, the city and all of the other taxing districts would start receiving full um, the full taxes for those properties. Um, the Committee on Housing Affordability and Diversity was um, another thing that 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 one kicked off in 2020. Um, it was just the ad hoc committee that you all um, put together for, uh, you know, to gather some more information on possible strategies for, you know, um, encouraging the production of more affordable and or just more diverse types of housing in Estacada. I did provide a link to that report and I'm just realizing that the the actual recommendations that they provided to you all uh, were not attached in that report. So apologies for that. I can um, find that for anyone who wants to reference it. Um, I think it's also on the website, but it's uh, basically, you know, a list of things like code amendments or financial incentives or um, tax exemptions and abasements strategies that can um, help kind of incentivize those types of housing development. 
that leads into the next item on the summary here um, because those recommendations really informed the um, list of housing strategies that is being developed with the housing needs analysis and strategy project, which we are um, in the middle, well, not really in the middle of, we're kind of coming up towards the end of that project now, um, sort of in the home stretch here. And uh, yeah, so the, the advisory committee for that project actually met on Wednesday and we did record that meeting. Um, I think, yeah, I've, I've posted it on the city's YouTube if anyone's interested in watching it, but um, it would be a, a really good kind of summary of where we're at in the development of those strategies. Um, and importantly, um, kind of get you familiar with where the, the prioritization of those strategies is currently at. You can also just check it out in the current draft of the report. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully you all can either take a look at that report or watch that video if it's easier for you um, ahead of the council briefing for um, this project, which is coming up on the 28th. Um, and that is, that's a conversation where it would, it would really be great to get more um, feedback from you all about whether or not those, um, the, the prioritization levels for each of the strategies, whether or not that resonates with you, or if there are some things that feels like, like, yeah, that might be a good strategy, but this is really, you know, these things over here are really kind of our top three or our top five priorities that we want to focus our energy and budget on. Um, so that is coming up. There will also be a community event on March 9th, which is a Wednesday, um, accompanied by a survey. And we are hoping to have that event in person. I think there are definitely people, I mean, I don't know, I think this is true for everyone, but it's just, yeah, it's a lot easier to have conversations with people in person, I think. And so we're really hoping that that can happen. Um, so that's on March 9th. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that right now. I'm gonna pause before I move on to the next items if anyone wanted to ask questions about those. Okay, are there any questions for Taylor at this point? Um, Jerry. So um, I, Again, this might be more directed towards Melanie than Taylor, but um, so the economic development manager um, can, so since we already have a, a, a company looking for a city manager for us and not every one of those, you know, the, there's gonna be a lot of those people that might not fit uh, for, fit our criteria for a city manager, but can those applications be reviewed um, for that position of economic development manager or, um, you know, whatever director, I don't remember the exact word Taylor used, but the director, um, can those applications be reviewed for that position also, or are we just recruiting a city manager and then figuring the rest out? My, my guess would be that those, the, um, although they probably might be able to fill that role, that might not be the priority of some of those candidates. Um, and so, but definitely we should let Jensen know that if they're, if they see some good candidates in there to let them know that we're going to be hiring for community development director um, and they should watch for that to come up. Um, Denise had reached out to a couple of people just to get their feedback and thinking they might be good. They might want to apply when we post it. And um, they were concerned. It was hard for them to commit to a, um, a role where they don't know who the city manager is going to be yet. And so just kind of that level of uncertainty made it difficult. So we thought once we get through um, the city manager process, then we'll be ready to put that out there. But that's a great idea, you know, just to let those people know, because some of them might have backgrounds in that, um, you know, in that area, and they might want to apply for that if they were really hoping to come to Estacada. So good idea, Jerry. Yeah, it was just my my whole thought process. You know, like I said, um, you know, some of the, some of those applicants might not fit what we're looking for for a city manager, but they might be you know ideal for you know mm -hmm. one of you know that other position that you know. Um, so I just figured you know since we're already getting those applications, we might as well you know look at them for that too if we if we can. Yeah, 
Yeah, good idea. Let's mention that to Eric. Mm -hmm. okay. Joel, do you have a question? Yeah, I see what uh, Jerry's point on there, but um, if I recall, I think we're required to post it out for a certain amount of time legally or something like that, and we have to take those in. So I think they'd still have to reapply, wouldn't they, or anything along those lines? No. I think they probably would have to reapply, but it might be nice to give them a heads up that, hey, this is coming up too, and your skill set looks like um, this might fit you. So, um, and maybe they could just resend in what they'd already put together. Sometimes it's so specific, you know, that you have to redo your whole resume or something. But, um, but anyway, yeah, we would post it out there. But some of those candidates also could be, they might be the one we're looking for. So. Okay. And before we go on, let's make sure we concentrate on getting Taylor's questions. I, 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 that's why we have her here. So let's ask her something to do with what she's already spoke on and we'll concentrate on the other stuff as we move along, if that's okay. Um, any questions for Taylor before she moves on with her presentation? Uh, Jared. Um, yeah, real quick, <clears throat> just to get the timeline down. So, um, so in March, you are hoping to have a, a public meeting and that will be addressing, and that's going to be addressing kind of the, some of the housing needs, just asking the community questions, so on and so forth. And then will we kind of get a report based off of that and then we can come together as a council and just examine that and see which direction to move forward is that yeah the definitely. understanding okay yeah so i i think <clears throat> we would plan to have at least one more council briefing after that event um because that event we would collect yeah like you said a bunch of input um and also the survey would collect some input um, and so be able to come back to the council and say, all right, here's, you know, the survey results, here's the input we got at the event, here's how the um, list of strategies and their prioritizations were updated, you know, to respond to that. Um, and then that briefing would be another opportunity for you all to say, you know, anything else about, well, this sure. doesn't, this still doesn't look right to us or um, you know, make make whatever changes you would want to make before before the actual draft of the code amendments and the draft of the comprehensive plan amendments would come to you in the form of, you know, an adopt adoption ready document. Um, we would want to be able to talk through the logistics of all of that before we have those adoption hearings, which even if we've talked through everything a few times before that, it's still going to be kind of a long hearing. So Sure. Um, yeah, we would want to get everything all worked through with you all first before bringing back, you know, the final draft of things. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to understand the timeline a little yeah. bit better. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I should also mention that um, for the timeline consideration, um, I think it's currently looking like those adoption hearings would happen around July, possibly August, depend sometimes summer schedules get weird. So, um, looking at July or August for adoption. Okay. Any more questions for Taylor on this particular part of her presentation? No? Okay, Taylor, go ahead and move on. So the next item on the list was um, land use decisions and projects. Uh, there's a lot I could have written out here, but um, I just linked to the projects page on the city website, which um, I think is fairly up to date. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, it's cityofestigated.org slash projects. And so that will show you um, basically all of the subdivisions and also urban renewal projects, but also, um, yeah, all of the subdivisions that have been approved since Campanella Estates. Um, and so that's kind of a nice place to just get like a high level snapshot of, um, yeah, what, what development can we expect to happen, residential development um over the next you know probably four years or so um in the past one year we you all approved six new subdivisions so that was Kern creek estates phase two eagle ridges phases one and two dugan estates that happened in two approvals but it's they're developing in seven phases and then la the last one was the northbrook subdivision so um yeah currently there's 
There are no new applications for um, more residential developments, but we have had a couple of pre-app meetings for people interested in coming in. Um, and then we've also had a couple of annexations that indicate interest in future development. So, um, so we know <laughs> it's, it's probably not gonna, maybe it'll slow down, but it's not gonna stop anytime soon. Um, so the next thing on the list is the, yeah, Katie, sorry. Just curious if you know off the top of your head what uh, the current count is for total number of single family resident homes that have been approved for development. In the past year, I don't have that number. In the past, I feel like I calculated this for the past like four years maybe it was, or maybe it was since starting with Faraday. Yeah, it, starting with Faraday Hills, I think it was around 1500 new homes. So okay, that's, that's thank lot. you. Yeah. Um, the transportation system plan update this is a this is a project that we got the TGM Transportation Growth Management grant for um, in September of 2020, <laughs> and I had heard from other planners like, "Oh yeah, they'll the state sure does take a long time to get those projects started," um, and yes, they sure do. <laughs> um, apparently, they have to send the internet governmental grant agreement to like the Department of Justice. And so there's been this whole really long uh, process getting it started, but it sounds like um, that IGA has been, um, hopefully the final draft of it has been submitted to DOJ and hopefully we'll be starting very soon. Um, I linked you all to the, the project proposal that the selected consultant had submitted. I think that's probably just the easiest way to give you a sort of summer high level summary of what that project's going to do. Um, but a couple of the things that I think that it sounds like um, sounds like some of you might agree are are sort of the like primary problems that the project will solve is that um, the layout, the current planned layout of the streets, um, the planned streets has. A has some gaps in it um, that maybe in 2007 when those maps were made, uh, it was not anticipated that Estacada would grow this quickly. I don't know. Um, but also we're just seeing we're seeing new growth patterns and we're seeing, you know, we have all these areas that were recently rezoned to a new type of zoning. So um, the development that you're going to anticipate happening there is is different. And so, you know, different types of streets, different classification, classifications of streets um, may be warranted there. So just kind of responding to um, the, the new growth that we're already seeing and also the um, new types of growth that are anticipated to be seen. And then also um, working on strategies for working with ODOT to resolve um, issues related to the highway. As you know, ODOT is, you know, has jurisdiction over the highway, um, but obviously impacts local residents <laughs> directly. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think we can all agree that it's frustrating to not have more control locally over what happens on the highway parts that come in through Estacada. Um, so yeah, just kind of working on, yeah, encouraging that cooperation. So it's, you know, more of a cooperation and maybe less of a fight. Um, so we'll see what they come up with for that. Um, and then kind of related, um, but it is a separate project that we're already moving forward with, is the traffic impact study scoping standards um, and just kind of protocol um, being adopted into our code so that with all of these subdivisions that are coming in, they are all doing, you know, we're making sure that they are all um, meeting a at least a minimum level of analysis um, and that they're using uh, a standardized approach for that. Um, and so the county planners and DKS have been, we've been working together to get that all drafted up. Um, and hopefully we'll get that scheduled here in the next couple of months for hearings. Um, and then lastly, um, we, we, I don't know, 
city staff, county staff, um, over the past few years, I mean, I think that this probably started before I even came to Estacada, but um, we've been slowly building this list of basically like problem spots in our code, things that are really confusing, things that are um, especially places that where the code, you know, contradicts itself or places where that code section is actually not legal for us to enforce or apply. Um, and so there's this growing list of changes that are needed in the code. Um, and so I, I think it'd be great to have a conversation with you all and maybe the planning commission on, well, how do you wanna tackle this? Like, do you wanna work on it uh, in sort of bundles that are, you know, a bundle of this type of, you know, categorized by type of issue or categorized by um, just by like code, you know, the chapter or the division of the code. Um, so that's, there's there's nothing really concrete for me to, to put in front of you right now with this, but um, that's definitely a conversation that I think we are, especially with all the growth that's coming in, like we, we really want our code to be legally defensible at a minimum. <laughs> so um, that's something I, I'm definitely interested in hearing. From the hey counselors. Taylor, I have a couple of questions. I'm gonna start off here. Okay, um, Joel, do you have a question for Taylor? Uh, first of all, I'm really excited to see that we're going to be moving through this because uh, getting some of the code issues fixed is something that, as you know, I've talked about in the past and it's been kind of a goal of mine since I got on the council. Um, so one of the things I might recommend that something else is going to start doing to, would be to do, uh, I call it, it's called code mapping. And it's um, basically, it's, I've seen other cities use the same thing when I was trying to figure out how to go about doing this. And they would map because while something in like, oh no, it could be, 2.47 could pertain to something over in, you know, 10 dot, whatever. It, there's, there's different things to pertain, as you mentioned, they, they interconnect. And so the code mapping allows us to make sure that when we tackle a certain section that we're getting everything that encompasses it and seeing how it goes about there. And so maybe that's something we can start on is like uh, basically mapping out our code and how they interact with each other so that we can understand how to tackle those. But I'm really excited to see this uh, on the list here. So thank you. Okay. Charity, you have a question? Um, yeah, and, and just kind of more just a comment to what uh, Taylor was asking. I, I'm i definitely interested in having that conversation and tackling the, the code and the language. Um, <clears throat> I would like to first just kind of pull out what's not legal as far as, you know, you're talking about a plan. Um, I'd say let's pull out what we can't do <laughs> and start there and then, you know, maybe go by section by section or whatever's kind of more easiest or, or feasible but um that that's just my my suggestion i don't know much about um what counselor Licky was saying code mapping but um i'm you know i'm i'm interested to hear about that as well so but i think this is this is great and i yeah i'm i'm in support of this for sure okay any other quick um katie um so one of the ideas that I think we all kind of had uh, back when the DEIC was originally created was that uh, when we talk about systemic oppression, that we really talk about, you know, codes being part of our system. Um, I would uh, like to just kind of confirm with the rest of the council that the idea at a certain point or at a, you know, uh, moving forward in the near or distant future, I don't know if this was the plan or not, but I would like to see proposed code changes go through the DEIC first and then um, receive some recommendations from them as well when we receive the proposed code amendments uh, just moving forward into the future. So I just guess I wanted to gauge what the rest of the council's feelings on that are that uh, moving forward, any proposed code changes would go through the DEIC for at least recommendation moving forward. What is everyone's thoughts? How does everybody feel about that? Is that something they'd be interested in? Uh, Jerry, you're, you're on. Um, anybody, everybody else okay with that? I, I thought oh, that was on. something, oh, sorry. Um, I thought that was something they were already going to be doing. 
Well, well, see, and that's what I was saying is I, that's what I was under the impression of as well. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to confirm that moving okay. forward when we do receive, um, like starting this year, essentially, especially since it sounds like the DEIC has established what their scope of, um, of equity or equality is going to look like. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe starting this year when we receive proposed code amendments that those proposals will also include a recommendation from the DEIC to show that it's gone through that council and that they're either good with it or here are their recommended uh, language changes based on what's been proposed or something like that. Um, I guess I just wanted to make sure that as we're having this conversation about changing the code that starting this year and moving forward, we know that the, that these proposed code amendments have gone through the DEIC for recommendation first. I think that's the plan. I think that was the plan, Taylor. Is that something that's pretty standard for the DEIC to do going forward? Yeah, I think so. And I think I also recall that we are now at least supposed to be <laughs> um, sending council packets to them also. Um, just so that um, they are at, at a minimum, they would have an opportunity to show up as an individual to that meeting or, um, you know, submit testimony or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, we can, we can send out materials um, as soon as we are able to, to any committees or, you know, agencies that you would want to have responses from for sure. Joel, you have another question? Um, I was kind of curious uh, if we're planning on sending to the DEIC before it kind of comes to us to get the recommendations, which I think we'd like to see them get involved some more. Um, I know that at one point we have to have a lawyer check into that. Would that be the last step, like after the council's approved to it, then it goes to like a lawyer to make sure that, that all the changes we want fit and are legal? Or at what point do they get involved in there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. I would think that the the draft that would go to the planning commission, because it would go to the planning commission first, I would think that that draft would either have already been vetted by, I would hope that it would already have been at least like review, you know, skimmed <laughs> um, or, or summarized to the city attorney. Um, I don't know, Melanie, do you know how many times the city attorney is asked to check a draft of something before it's finalized? I'm not completely sure, but I don't think that we've utilized the city attorney as much as maybe some who have him right down the hall or her right down the hall. Um, and so like the last, I know one of the last big code updates we did when, when the active transportation plan um, was adopted and all those um, code changes happened, that was, I don't believe the attorney reviewed it, but we were confident in the planning staff that had worked on that. But now, for instance, the marijuana ordinance, um, zoning ordinance or that was, is gonna be coming up, that's something that we are referring to our attorney because he has some great insight. He's been working with other communities on what can we legally do based on the concerns um, and the interests that the council expressed when you all talked about it. So I think that it just depends on what the, um, the rat harborage one, that I, we didn't send that to the attorney. Um, as far as I know. So I think it depends on, you know, which part of the code is being reviewed as to as whether it would go to the attorney or not. But we are anticipating to use the attorney more frequently than we have in the past, um, just on a, on a variety of things. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, any other questions in this part of this? No? Okay, go ahead, uh, Taylor. I didn't have any other items on my list there. So unless okay. there's other questions, thank you all for your time. All right. And again, we appreciate you and everything you do. And we're glad you have some help in that office with everything we have coming down the pike. And uh, we look forward to working with you and everything that you bring forward in the future. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's next, Millie? All right, thank you, Taylor. Next, we have, um, and I tried to guess the time frame of how this might all roll out, um, which turns out to not be extremely accurate. So um, just moving forward, the next section we have here, we kind of incorporated the infrastructure and community development discussion into their report so that they didn't have to all stay till the end, which I appreciate that. Thank you for doing it that way. And now 
we would move on to the 2021 goal review and 2022 goal planning and then our workshop development. So what I re I'd really like to hear from you because I think already we've identified some priorities that are just kind of come, they're bubbling to the surface, public safety, our streets, um, how to control speeds in neighborhoods, um, how to, um, you know, map the street lights, make sure we have sufficient lighting. So safety and then the code. Um, and so I'm happy to run through this. I see we have a couple of questions already. So I'm, I'm open for your discussion. All right, I'll start it off. Katie, go ahead. Um, I have a minor change to the uh, um, update that we received as, for the goals. Um, in 2021, I was actually not the council liaison for the fire board. Um, and I know that I was previous to that. I just wanted to make sure that, especially when it's related to 2021, that that section is removed since I was not the liaison for the fire board in 2021. That was just a minor change. I wanted Perfect. to make sure reflected. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I will make that change. All right. And uh, Joel? Um, I want to take a few minutes to talk about uh, one of the goals I'd like to put on our, our, our list here. It's already kind of been mentioned a little bit, and that's about a public safety committee. Um, I've been looking into it for a little while. And I've been waiting patiently for, to, for the, um, for the uh, this meeting specifically so I could bring it up and talk about it. So I've done a lot of research on uh, look at different cities around Oregon and around uh, actually the country and a public safety committees are actually uh, more common than people might think. Um, and they encompass everything from uh, law enforcement to traffic to, uh, you know, the people with disabilities and kind of getting that things kind of fixed up in there, those areas, all the way up to, you know, safe routes and all that type of stuff for, for uh, students. So they, they, they have a pretty wide range in which they go to. They involve the emergency management. They involve kind of everything. So the, the kind of a la carte pieces we can pick in there is quite well, quite, uh, quite wide. But um, a couple of the ones I looked at that I really, uh, really did like, uh, let me pull my notes up here. Uh, I really like the uh, Milwaukee uh, one that they had there. Um, basically, uh, I can put pull up the share with you guys, or I can just tell you what would you guys prefer. Can do just tell us. I think that'd be fine. Okay. So um, the they have some wording in there. I'd like to kind of read to you guys, and uh, it kind of really does a really good job encompassing it most of it. And I believe it was Fairview actually kind of mimics this quite well. Um, and actually, I got an ordinance from Cora, from Fairview that I can send to you guys as well if you need to get a better idea. Um, Public Safety Advisory Committee, or the PSAC, uh, was established to advise the City Council on community livability concerns related to public safety and neighborhood livability. The committee is responsible for the following activities. Review and make recommendations for city community partnerships to mitigate the negative influence of crime and traffic impacts on the community. Promote public education and awareness of the effects of traffic impacts and mobility issues in the community. Review and make recommendations on city infrastructure needs related to streets, sidewalks, trails, multimodal paths, traffic markers, traffic control devices, ADA and various transportation, and transmit related matters that affect pedestrian, cyclist, and driver safety. Collaborate with local, county, and state government agencies to develop strategies to mitigate negative community livability concerns by focusing partnership agency resources to reduce or eliminate specific problem areas or concerns. Uh, such, other, ever, such other activities as the council, uh, city council may assign. So uh, I'm not gonna go the deep into the, the ordinance that was written because but basically that's a kind of a summary of what the ordinance pertains to. Um, but the whole point of having a public safety committee would be like allow for uh, them to kind of have a continuous review on uh, crime in our city, um, the law enforcement that we use, review our law enforcement contracts to make recommendations, you know, work with law enforcement to review like when they do reports on where and how the crime is, you know, maybe how they can, you know, share information and try to, try, try to determine how they might be able to best use the resources we have available to us. Review traffic issues such as they're talking about speeding around the city. We're talking about the speed bumps and traffic lighting, crosswalks. I think Jerry's mentioned a couple of times to review all of those items and kind of see where they where they rate, how we can best address them, and then bring recommendations to the council. Um, we talked about safe routes, which I think is something that with new homes coming up need to be reevaluated on a consistent basis. 
Um, we can talk about the ADA problems we have, for example, downtown, having all of our ADA parking on one side of the street instead of two and how we might be able to, to work on fixing those and avoid that in the future. Um, it could be a whole variety of things and it's kind of whatever other things we would see that would fit well in there. Um, but I mean, there's a, there's a whole there's a whole list of things that we could drop in their lap or off the bat to look to get on there. And they could bring us this list of priorities to the council and say, hey, we've reviewed all our crime reports, reviewed reviewed traffic reports, we reviewed um, input from the community. So we don't we we you know we need to do some surveys here, here, and here so we can get better information. You know, once they have those surveys, we they can say, hey, okay, so we've compiled the information, we looked through it, and we've uh, we think that. These are some things that the council should be focusing on for, you know, as far as we should be putting some money in this places to get better traffic lighting around the area. We should put some money in this place to get maybe another officer or something, or whatever it is, you know, make those recommendations and bring them back to the council to run it. Now, I've looked at a couple different things on here. And one of the things that actually caught me, uh, caught me a little bit off guard and what that was, I was surprised to see was in probably about 90% of the ones I looked at the chairman of that of that council was either a the mayor or a or a city council person um that goes everywhere from across the u.s uh pittsburgh was a pretty big one there too i saw i liked um anyways and you guys can do your own research on this of course but uh it's it's i think the reason why they have either the mayor or a council person involved in there is because it helps to get that consistent feedback right away to the council but also get allows the council to uh to have some speaking into because it can be big decisions and the reason why I noticed that the mayor was most in, uh, heavily involved, also, uh, I noticed the city manager was also involved in it too, and a lot of them too as well. Um, but the mayor was the, was also chairperson, a lot of them too, because in the course of an emergency, generally it's the city manager and the mayor that are the ones that are leading the emergencies. And so having them at the head of a public safety committee usually would fit pretty well as well. So those are some of the things I've noticed looking at a bunch of the ordinances. Uh, some of the cities in our own uh, state that have them are Milwaukee, Happy Valley, Junction City, Fairview, Crestwell, Oak Ridge. Those are all different varieties of, uh, of size of cities to show it. Some cities outside of Oregon, the big ones are Pittsburgh, Cambridge, Atlanta, Belmont, San Antonio. Those are all big ones that have it. It's going to show you the spread out um, of where they're at and the way, different ways they've been used. So um, I think it's something that we have so many things on our plate that would fall under this committee. That is something we should probably, you know, talk about and see if we can get formed and possibly uh, put into place right away so we can start addressing some of those those issues. And that's all I got for now. Thank you, Joe. Uh, anybody else wish to comment on that? I'm not seeing any hands. So, Melanie, I'm going to hand it back to you. Okay. So, it sounds like um, if there's kind of an agreement on that that we'd like to do some research on this and make some, just come up with some ideas and see what is actually gonna be a good fit for us to CADA, um, that staff could work on that and bring that back to you? Um, or do we have other people wanna go another direction? Um, Katie? Um, I guess, Personally, when I hear about wanting to have another committee, I think about what that membership roster is gonna look like. And then when I think about the membership roster, I really wonder who's gonna be able to commit to something like that. Um, I guess I look back on the Chad committee and we had this idea of who was going to be attending the meetings and of the meetings that they had only about half the people attended on a regular basis. So um, I guess I would really like to hear from People like this, the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office and the Estacada Fire District and um, hear what kind of uh, what feedback or recommendations they have on the idea. Maybe if they hear about the idea, they're jumping at the, you know, they're jumping up and down with excitement and they say, yes, if something like that were in place, we would absolutely love to. I would just really hate to see um, some sort of a committee founded without the without those people being involved without certain stakeholders being involved and if they're not going to be able to commit to a certain level of involvement then I don't know if it's something that I think that the city should be trying to take on and provide you know essentially recommendations to other 
people that won't have a certain level of involvement, if that makes any sense. You know, I mean, a public safety committee providing recommendations to our police group who are not involved in the committee itself, um, it could backfire, if that makes any sense. Um, same with like the fire district, if they're going to provide any sort of recommendations to our fire district, but our fire district doesn't have any involvement in the subcommittee, um, it also could backfire. So I guess I would just really like to hear from some of the other partners that we have when it comes to public safety, people like the fire district and the, the police officers, um, and really hear what their uh, level of commitment could be or involvement or interest would be before we really continue this discussion. It would be my opinion. Charity and then Paul. Um, I can't speak for Clackamas County, but one thing that might be <clears throat> a little bit encouraging is I do know that Multnomah County really does appreciate um, their public safety committees in the Fairview and Troutdell area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they've been pretty helpful for the sheriff's office. So, um, yeah, I mean, we just have to reach out to Clackamas County and then see how that would you know, if they do have the time, I know um, Multnomah County does, and it, that actually seems to be very, very helpful for them. Clackamas is a bigger agency, so I would hope that they would have enough manpower to kind of help us out with that. But um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt to, to reach out. And I think ultimately it would be a, a good thing. Um, but it's like you said, Katie, you know, just making sure that people are willing to step up and take the time and commit to these things, which is, you know, it, it's hard these days, but um, hopefully there's enough of a want that 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 can happen. So, yeah, I, I think it would be good to explore. Mm -hmm. Paul? I'm on board as well, too. I think it's uh, definitely was something worth looking into. Um, and I think, Melanie, you were asking if, if we should have the city look into it. Yep, by all means, I think this would be great and incorporate uh, some of the things that Katie said as well, too, getting some of the other partners within the city involved in this and, and get their thoughts as well, too. So, yeah, on board with, with digging into this more. Okay, Joel and Jerry. Um, so, kind of a little bit on what Katie's talking about. I think it's important that definitely get the that those uh, agencies are involved. Um, but I've seen a couple of different ones. Like I said, I spent some time looking through a lot of these different ordinances and interactions, and I spoke to some people that have actually been on the committees. Some of them actually, what they do is they get a monthly report sent to them from those. Uh, if they can't, if they couldn't get people to commit to be in there, they got the reports from those uh, from those agencies, and they bring those to it so they have the information to look at there. And then they would send something back to them. They did have, have to do it through like a reporting communication versus having someone that can actually attend. So there are ways around if for some reason it was not people to physically be at those meetings to communicate back and forth. So, and we already get a report from the Clackamas County. It wouldn't be that hard for them to add on a public safety committee or to add to that report. And I believe uh, Clackamas County does have a person that's specifically out there for these liaison positions. So um the second part with the fire department, um, the our own fire department, I think, has already been looking for ways to try to interact with the city in a few areas. I think you've been to a bunch of those meetings. You're a liaison now. Is that mm -hmm. correct, John? That's so right. it, would, it wouldn't it wouldn't be hard for them to to reach out and do that. I mean, I, I know that they reach out to um, nonprofits in the area to work with them on a consistent basis because they want to be involved as much as they can into the community. So I think that'd be less of a concern. But I think again, like Katie said, it's in, try to figure out to what level they can involve themselves. And then if there's not, find ways to get around it. So, because I mean, the other communities have the same challenges I've noticed and they, they have to, to adapt to what fit through, through them. So um, one city that was our size that I looked at was called Oak, Oak Ridge. Um, they have a, right off their website, uh, just to kind of give you a jump start on their uh, Melanie, they have their, um, their ordinance right there linked right from the same page and look it up, including all the guidelines and stuff. And it talks a little bit about that in there. So, and they're about the same size we are. Thank you, Joe. Jerry. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like the idea too, but I definitely want to, um, like Katie said, get feedback from the um, from the partners. And I think the school district should be one of those partners that we reach out to, um, you know, especially regarding public safety and, and everything. But uh, yeah, I mean, getting feedback, trying to figure out what, what you know, what level of, of involvement they can, um, they can put into it. Because, you know, I, I, I would just hate to see us get something going like this and then 
like the Chad committee just not have the participation and and this committee actually you know flounder due to lack of interest and lack of participation so that's okay, all thank you Terry uh, Katie you got something else uh, yeah, I do. So, some one of the things that was uh, ringing off in my head when Councillor Litke was speaking about some of the areas that this particular uh, committee would be able to provide recommendations on, or some of the things that they would be reviewing. I guess my biggest question is, what would be the the difference between that and the infrastructure committee? Um, just because, to me, when I think about street signs, when I think about uh, you know, uh, uh, disability access. When I think about things like that, I think about infrastructure and we already do have an infrastructure committee within our city that only meets quarterly. And honestly, if we're going to be uh, essentially taking on this focus and, and shifting this focus to a different committee, I would wonder what the purpose of the infrastructure committee would be moving forward, or if we could just essentially repurpose that committee and redo some of their bylaws to make sure that they're maybe just meeting on a more regular basis and maybe, you know, being more uh, focused on, on the public safety aspect of infrastructure instead of just the regular aspect of infrastructure. I don't know, what is what are other people's thoughts? I mean, I'm just thinking about infrastructure committee being a perfect candidate for uh, what Councillor Litke was bringing up is what this particular committee should be focusing on. That's a good question, but I don't think, uh, infrastructure has its place, unfortunately. If you look at the infrastructure, there are differences. But my preference would be that we definitely investigate having a public safety committee. With the fact that our city is growing at such a rate at this point, I think it's essential that we look into this. And there are cities that have them and they're working very well. Um, my recommendation is that we look into this. Now, tying that to infrastructure, obviously, um, Melanie, that's something that you can look into to see how hard that would be and if it would really fit. I'm more than happy to look at that. But at the same time, I definitely think investigating the option of a public com uh, safety committee is, is pretty important at this point. So um, uh, the only one I didn't hear from Justin was you. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, actually, I think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think we should look into it and see what others do. I'd be curious if some of the cities that might not have it, maybe they do tie it into infrastructure as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good idea to look into it for sure. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so Melanie, I think you've okay. uh, got the answer to that yeah. question. Perfect, thank you. And I did cross my mind. The one section when Joel, when you were reading, uh, Councilor Litke, we were reading the, um, what that committee was charged with. It, it did, as soon as you hit the infrastructure part, I'm like, oh, it has kind of an overlap, but we don't necessarily have to have an overlap or we can make it overlap as much as we want. So I'll, I'll start looking into that um, have a meeting with the contract cities in a, just a couple of weeks for Clackamas County and can, can um, check in with them about that. And I think that you guys are all coming up with great ideas that are very, we can borrow from other areas, but also very um, make it a, a cicada. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Joel, you got one more question before we uh, move on? Uh, one of the things to think about and that when I was doing my research, I noticed was this, uh, the public safety committees incorporated a heavy involvement in community feedback and mm -hmm. getting and, and getting things back from them. And so that was one of their big things was, uh, and I think it even mentions it is a uh, city community partnerships. Um, and that's why it was so important. I mean, I've even seen a lot of the neighborhood watches kind of pass through uh, public safety committees and working with the law enforcement and as, as well, they would uh, intend and get involved for neighborhoods or, you know, people in a certain, certain, if it's a bigger city, there'd be districts and stuff that they would get involved in. But the whole point is to bring that community involvement in. And I think that's where the infrastructure or, cause some of the stuff could even be argued for the DEIC because of the ADA stuff. But the fact is that there's a big piece of that needs to come in. And I think the DEIC or the infrastructure are going to miss those if you try to overlap them. And that's why having a committee that not only involves those pieces, but also brings in a big focus is to bring that community relationship in is really going to be where the, some of the powerful benefits come into. And then they can make those recommendations. Even if the recommendations, you know, hit directly to the city council, because most of them do, uh, almost every committee I saw went directly to the city council, some went to the mayor. Um, but it would be, we could pass some of that information they could pass over to another committee 
uh, you know, the information they've they've received and uh, kind of compiled, and let that committee bring forward forward some sort of uh, report as well if we want to go that route. I just didn't see the type of route in anything else, but it doesn't mean we can't consider it as well. But the whole point was that community relationship, getting that feedback in there, that they that the citizens know that okay, hey, this, the city cares about our public safety. They care about the things that we're trying to tell them, things that we see in our own eyes and ears. Here's a committee that we can bring it to, and we know that their focus is to build that relationship. They want to listen to us. That they need want to bring that in, and we can take the information from law enforcement and fire and the public works and everything else. And we can come kind of collaborate that together to bring back some solid input to make sure that we as representatives have some good feedback of, of not only what the agencies that we hear about from a consistent basis are, but also what our community is trying to tell us too, and having it come from a, a, a good source of that's pulling that information in. Um, and it can covering all these areas. These are, these are like the staples that almost every public safety committee has found has. So that's why I like this so much because it got the staples of everything in there and then didn't add a bunch of stuff on, even though there's a whole lot of a la carte items we can add into there into it. But if when you start to research that Melanie, I think you're gonna find the same things I did. So all right, Great. that's all thank I'm... you. All right. Thanks for kickstarting that. All right. And Melanie, do you think this is a good time to maybe take a few minutes or would you like to just continue on from this point? I, this could be a good time <laughs> to take a break unless somebody really has something they wanted to get through before we break. No, I think everybody's good. I don't see any hands. Uh, Katie, are you good with that? Go ahead. Are, are we going to talk about the goals when we come back or uh, are we yeah. moving on from it when we come back? Because I love the idea of break time. I really love the idea of a break time. Let's take a break. And then when we come back, I just highlighted this is the goal. Uh, the goal list from the last couple of years has been very daunting to me. And I don't know, I don't know how it feels to you guys, um, but I'd like to kind of just go through, I'm not gonna like do the whole thing, but just kind of touch on a few things and then um, see where you guys, I guess, you know, public safety, neighborhood, community livability, um, doing some code updates. Those are kind of like the things that I'm pulling out right now from what you would like to prioritize. Um, but yeah, but let's go through the goals when we come back and then, um, I'll let you guys kind of take the lead again and see where you want to go. Okay, so time frame for the break. What are we looking at? Five, ten minutes? How much minutes you need? Ten, ten minutes? Ten minutes would be good. I think everybody can accomplish everything in ten minutes. Okay, ten back, at, back at 2.45. Right, okay, I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. Okay, Melanie, you want to continue on? With All right. I thought next I would just kind of work my way down the – um, council goals, which is the next thing in the, wait a minute, oh, there's so many pages. Okay, um, I thought I'd just kind of hit the, the overarching goals, give a little update, because you can read what Denise has put in there as far as where we were at um, as she handed things off. And um, going forward, I kind of feel like we're in a little two month gap time here where staff has a lot of things. There's just been so much going on. And there's, I feel like we got all these little fingers going out that they need to wrap up, tie down, and we need to you know, finish some things and um, get ready to move on with whatever our next phase of life might be. And so I think in the next couple of months um, to, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And then you guys, as you guys determine the best route forward, um, you might want to revisit this and give new direction to, you know, where, where you're going, but, or give redirection to if we're still working on this. Um, so is that all right? Just to kind of work our way through the goal sheet. Quickly. Yeah, I think that's what we had talked about. And we also had talked about coming back for another one of these uh, workshops after we can get together in person. Isn't that right, Katie? I think when we talked, we talked about having two, one before and one after. Is that not right? Um, I believe that conversation happened when we were talking about the fact that we don't have a new city manager. And I think yeah. that the idea based on that conversation was that this uh, goal setting workshop that we have right now is more designed for us as a council. And then I think that it would be beneficial for us to meet again as a council with our new city manager to sort of have a, a, a special workshop designed around getting to know the new city manager and setting our goals with the new city manager as well. But that was my yeah. understanding that conversation yeah. okay so that's exactly what i was talking about so i think okay. you know you guys focusing these next couple months on getting everything tied down getting everything mm -hmm. in place and then we'll come back 
and kind of fine tune what we talked about, make sure that everybody's on board with this and we continue on from that point. So I think you're very much right in what you've got planned here. Eleanor. Okay, all right, great. Well, on the first section, first page, we've got uh, facilitate community interaction and continuing partnerships um, with our lo the local agencies, which is kind of an ongoing process. Um, but we um, need to maybe be more specific. I know we'll be working with the school district on um, their, they've been reaching out to get together about the ball fields and the sports facility that um, we were working with them on. And so I will continue with that. Um, the next section, opening Highway 224, I sent you that update from ODOT and I talked to the uh, Will Ewing. Yeah, I know he's, it's nice to have it back in local hands again, because I know there's a ton of work to do up there, but I feel like sometimes if it gets too far removed from us, then they don't, I mean, not that they don't want to get done. I know they want to get done. Um, but I feel like now our own district handling the guardrails, the signage, the road repairs, they've got three teams working from promontory up and one team that they've contracted work working down. Um, and so they're, they know that the, um, Whitewater Festival is in May. That seems like a long time from now, um, but that's their, they, they wanna make sure that they have it open by then if there's any way possible to do that. Did you have a question, Councilor Litke? I think you kind of touched on it. I was gonna say, they're, they're, they're say they said that they expect there to be a 2022 uh, Clackamas River season for us this yeah. year, so. That's, that is the, the goal and it is a little more locally controlled right now. Um, so and then engage the community. This is a little vague with me as far as connecting with the nonprofits, um, although we do include them in the budget. So that's something maybe we'll kind of drill down on later on. Um, the electronic reader board is almost done. Um, it's just ready to be installed. So that should be out um, in across from City Hall by the parking lot there um, shortly. Let's see, implement five-year strategic plan for urban renewal. So the Main Street project, um, I have a lot of questions on that. It's, and Okay, Councilor Dunsmere too, yes. Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean okay. to interrupt you. Um, but in, in the engage the community section, um, I noticed uh, over the last year, I, I realized we didn't have like a lot of events to promote, um, but how did you feel like our Facebook engagement was going or the, the, the way that we were sharing information on the Facebook page? Um, I think that it would be nice to include in this engage the community section, some sort of uh, um, a sentence about improving the accessibility in social media or something like that. Uh, and maybe just being able to monitor how successful our community engagement on Facebook specifically is or other sources of uh, you know, social media or something like that. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, I feel like um, I have only, it's like just the facts and that's not what Facebook is necessarily for. Um, although I feel like it's a good way to get information out. And when I posted those pictures of the snow at the end of December, oh my word, people love that. And so I think people know they can go there to get information if needed. Um, and every once in a while, I'll put something good out there. But other than that, it's a little dreary. So um, that might be something we can, can work on. Councillor Litke. Um, along for, to kind of help with what Katie's questions were, uh, there's something called insights under there, which is reports basically for interactions. You can track it all the way down to specific posts and, and those type of things. So. Um, if we're curious about that, maybe uh, even like a monthly basis, if you would just want to send us out some like an insight monthly report or something like that, the, that we can yeah. maybe answer Katie's uh, council Desmer's question. Uh, yeah. And that way we can kind of see how it's performing. And, you know, also it might help you to see what's, what you posted that was really grabbing their attention and stuff as well. So that's a great idea. I can include those in reports to you. Um, the Arts Commission has really engaged with their social media right now. And Nicole McMerrick has been creating most of those posts and they're so beautiful and she's just doing a really good job. And she usually sends them to me once or twice a week. And then I post them um, because we have, according to policy staff has to do the posting, um, but she makes it really easy. And so that's a great example, but I think those insights, sharing those insights with you all would, would help. And then you can give a little feedback too. Um, 
So Main Street, I feel like um, we need to get the we need to get the design and get public input on what people are hoping to see out there. But I really don't I don't see us getting that constructed this summer with the transition. I mean, if that's if that's what you want us to focus on, we'll focus on that. But with the transition in city managers and with Matt not being here and his position being vacant for for a short while, um, I don't want to rush through that process. Um, and I I just have a lot of questions. Like, when is the best time of year to to do that? Um, can it be phased? Can we do the slide? I guess I'm having flashbacks from the last time. Um, sure, so, sure. <laughs> Councilor oh. Strobel. I, I would agree with you that, especially thinking about last time, that was such a huge undertaking and it helped to have staff available that was that had the time or at least um, was able to make some time to work on that. We are, we are uh, short staffed at this point. So I, I'm fine with putting, some, putting that one off, uh, but I'd like to have uh, a concrete time as to when we would pick it back up again, as opposed to some point or after a couple mm -hmm. months, um, you know, if we could, you know, maybe maybe at least start the conversations, um, you know, who knows, September 1st or something along those lines, just tossing the date out there. But I'd like to have something solid in place. Okay, I'll come back with some, a good, uh, like a solid recommendation for a timeline. Because I was thinking we really do need to start public input and design and then engineering, it kind of goes away from our hands. Um, but then it would be the time to start talking to the stakeholders who are going to be really impacted by it. And my concerns are, where is the traffic going to get detoured to? What's the best time of the year to do it? Um, can we do phasing? There's a, there's a lot to work on. If we can get Wade Creek Park 3 finished up, um, I think that would open up some bandwidth also to work on this project. Um, Councillor Tenbush. Um, so I, and I'm I'm okay with uh, putting this project off. I completely understand those um, your concerns. Um, one thing that I, you know, I'm I'm going to be beating a dead horse here, but um, if we're not going to move forward with that project, we definitely need to look at um, the lighting in that crosswalk on, um, you know, right there by True Value and, you know, that corner. Um, so that's my input. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Charity, do you still have a question or no? Uh, no, not really. Um, uh, Councilor Strobel actually just threw out a time that I was thinking. I was just thinking the fall to, you know, okay. when he said September 1st, that was what I was thinking as well. So that's it. All right, Kate, Katie, you had something else? Um, I just wanted to throw out my support of sometime this year developing a timeline and beginning com community engagement or involvement and or in getting the community input from it this year. I think that that's going to help set us up so that in 2023, um, we can actually move forward with any, you know, concrete construction plans. But I think community engagement should be the number one priority as it relates to this project this year. Okay. Great, thank you for that feedback and for the consideration. Um, okay, next page. Um, that was also, let's see, I think that was a continuation of, oh, I think I got my pages mixed up because the like on the next page is talk about Main Street. So the first bullet under urban renewal was continue working with downtown commercial properties and disrepair, vacant and occupied. And we're kind of still working on that. We'll still have the, the grants that are available. And we've been having more and more people reach out to us also. Um, so you may have some good grant applications coming that would help to continue to bring some vitality to the downtown. Revise the sign ordinance. I highlighted that because I don't know exactly what that means. Um, and I, I haven't started working on it. I don't know that we really have, um, but that would might fit into the ordinance review or the code review that, um, Taylor was talking about also. Mm -hmm. um, and then create a downtown experience. Um, like you said, the, the events were almost non-existent. However, the tree lighting was a lot of fun. And there was so many people was, that came out to that. Um, it was, yeah, it was really nice to have um, the fire district get involved and just the school and their music that they brought down. Um, 
and it seemed like people were really having a good time. So I think we are ready. And I know DEC is working on some some events coming up after we get out of this next little bit here. Um, yeah. Work to expand variety of housing opportunities, and that's at continuing to move forward with the HNA. And you'll have some decisions coming to you and some recommendations. Um, just from the the workshop that we had that was going over, like Taylor had mentioned, um, the strategies have a priority level, like is this a medium level recommendation or is this high level low? And I think it'll be important for you to look at that because there's a lot of recommendations um, that, that are general. They in general help a community to have a more diverse housing, but they don't guarantee it. And then we wanna make sure that our neighborhoods are livable and don't have a lack of parking and don't have um, too small of lots. Um, so there's a lot of things. I think you have to weigh the, the pros and the cons on that, um, but that will be up to you. Um, Councilor Lickey. Uh, so one of the things on here says, find ways to promote multifamily housing and or mixed use. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I've been, uh, kind of looking into a little bit and, and trying to figure out ways we can do this without having to try to go down the CET road or anything else. It would be to uh, look at our ordinances when it comes down to the requirements for building, whether it be so, uh, you know, so many like have um, triplexes, duplexes be required after, you know, either size of the size of the development or so many acres or so many houses or whatever it might be, some way to put some sort of program in place that says if you're building 100 homes, you have to have, you know, five or 10 of those have to be triplexes or duplexes or whatever multifamily homes inside of that. And not like a apartment complex, but intermix them throughout the, so we kind of keep that, because I think that's what everybody's concerns are, is they don't want to see a bunch of apartments all around our, our areas. That's what I hear a lot of, but they understand that there's a need for, for more uh, affordable housing. And so um, that might be a way to do it is to have those, you know, those duplexes, triplexes mixed in with single family homes in different parts of the uh, different parts of the communities. And so people have places to rent um, at the same time that, you know, that kind of quelches some of that concern with having, a, you know, oh, we're gonna turn into an apartment community. That's, you know, and while one of those things, you know, you know, it can be turned into an apartment community, but at the same time, it might find a way to intermix that. And so I'd be kind of curious if we can investigate ordinances or ways to kind of go about that through it that way, so. Paul, did you have something? Yeah, just chiming in on that. I think those are great ideas. I think that's what we're looking forward to hearing from with our housing needs analysis is getting that information coming out of that. And then we can kind of discuss from there. Yep, exactly. Katie, did you have something? I was just gonna echo what uh, Councillor Strobel just said, which is that that's already one of the recommendations that's in the, uh, the strategies that the HNA analysis people will be recommending to us. I, I actually did participate in that meeting on Wednesday, and there's 18 recommendations that they're making to us. Um, lots and lots of recommendations, including the fact that I don't know. Uh, I mean, a lot of you guys are the counselors who I got to serve on the council with in 2019 when we redid the comprehensive zoning map. We redid a lot of our zones and we added a lot of new zones and things like that. And they're still saying that we didn't add enough R3 zones. So, I mean, there were a lot of uh, recommendations that we'll be talking about. I believe at the end of this month is when we'll be getting um, the packet, all of us as a council, and we'll be talking about it as a council on the 28th of February. So uh, wait for that. But yeah, what Councillor Litke was just speaking to was actually a recommendation, uh, not a recommendation, I'm sorry, a requirement that is now uh, for all the cities with 10,000 or more people, uh, it's called House Bill 2001. And that's the idea that now every single residential zone allows for the development of duplexes and triplexes and all cities above 10,000 people are required to have that in their development uh, code. And that is one of the recommendations that the housing needs analysis uh, strategy people are going to be making to us is that we move closer to the requirements of House Bill 2001 that we are not actually required to meet, but we are recommended to meet to improve the, for the development of multifamily units. So uh, I look forward to that uh, meeting in February. It's gonna be a good one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead, Melanie. Okay, all right, moving down. I just, I checked off a bunch of things on the rest of that page because they were 
done. Um, yeah, they're done or ongoing with not much thought that is needed to keep them going. Um, support, the very last one, support infrastructure to attract visitors. Um, and to me, I was thinking that was just marked as ongoing, but parks, seating, restrooms. We still have trouble with our restrooms um, with the vandalism, which is really unfortunate because I feel like our, rest, our public restrooms need to be open on the weekends and after hours. And we struggle and struggle with how to um, not have them just damaged every time we try to do that. And so um, we'll keep working on that. Um, any ideas or if you hear of other cities that are having better luck with it, um, maybe it's just something I, I tell the guys, you know, it's job security. You're going to have to fix stuff all the time because there's a small contingent of people who just mess things up for everybody and trying to make it nice for, you know, for everybody. And um, just, you just got to keep it going. And then the rest of the community doesn't even notice a lot of times because they, they keep it up um, as it gets ruined, but um, it's a struggle. And so I appreciate the guys for continuing with that. But if you have ideas or um, other towns that you hear of, um, let me know. So, okay. Katie, Katie has something before you move on. Um, out of curiosity, is it possible for us to um, sort of light a fire, under, a fire underneath the uh, public works department to plant those plants? I mean, I know that they said that they're working on it and they're hoping to do it this year, but we also kind of heard something similar the year before mm -hmm. and kind of something similar the year before. Is it possible for us to like put on our goals that we would like to see public works actually add um, some sort of vegetation or landscaping to the areas along Highway 224, whether it be in the, the median or along the sides. Can we yeah. kind of give them a, a, an ultimate end date on that? I would like to see that happen this spring. Um, we've, mm -hmm. gotten, we've gotten quotes from R&R &R Nursery, um, who's a local nursery, and they do a great job. They do a lot of work in other cities in the public areas. Um, and so they have just been, I think, extremely busy. So we just need to maybe be a, a squeaky wheel a little bit more um, or find a different company who could, um, if, if there's recommendations for other companies that might be able to do that, because they were going to do um, redo all along the edge of the highway and then the, the median in the center um, and then around the welcome sign. That's where we were kind of planning to make those adjustments, but they bogged down. So we just need to kick that into gear. Um, I'd like to have it done before the summertime. And Councilor Lickey? If I recall from the, when he was speaking earlier, I think he said he, they have a bunch of requests for quotes out to nurseries mm -hmm. and they've just been having trouble getting uh, responses from them. Yeah. So um, I, I, think that's, I think that's what he said that it had bogged them down is they don't have, they're not getting the, the quotes back. Yeah, and so. that, has been, that has been the problem. Um, so like I said, we just need to, apply a little more pressure i think to make sure i think covid's yeah. had a play on this too yeah I think truth so. of it. i've talked with staff about that and covid has created a problem that even affects nursery people we don't have as many out there working in the field due to covid and attacking so many people so we have to give them a small break for that um so anyway I, they're working. that could be yeah that could be <laughs> what it is um i i don't know but it has been like pulling teeth to try to get that going, but we will, we will get that going. Um, Cause I know every time that Brent gives a chamber report, he's going to bring it up again. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to keep it on our mind. But he's we will. An advocate. Yes. And I, I agree. It, it, and I know that it looks, you know, you go to other places and sometimes it's phenomenal and other places, sometimes it just looks just like ours um, because it is a struggle, but that I think that we can, we can make that happen. And we also talked about um, some work that needs to be done on Broadway because it's been now, it'll be seven years coming up this June. Um, and so we, we need to do some replanting and some of the trees have died, been replanted, died again. Um, it's just, it takes a lot to keep things beautiful, but it's, I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. Everybody enjoys it. So, all right. Yeah. Um, next page, create an accessible community. And we're talking about parks and DEIC reviewing um, criteria with an equity lens. We are starting on the Campanella um, design, working with Parks and Rec. Um, we will, thank you for always bringing that to my attention because 
um, even in the next two months, I might forget. DEIC it needs to be in the middle of that. Um, and so they'll be looking at um, the design for Campanella and also doing some outreach to the Cascadia Ridge folks that live in that area to if we we won't do the whole park up there at the top we've done they've they've um, got it all grassed and open it's open space um, and took care of some of the drainage that was happening into the neighbor's property um, but we'd like to at least do an element or two up there um, in this coming summer and then um, finish it out the next year but we have to see we'd like to see we don't have to I guess but we would like to see what people that live in that neighborhood would like to have up there. Um, so we'll be doing some outreach on that. Um, pedestrian bicycle safety and connectivity. We did receive the CDBG grant, or at least it's recommended. Um, Denise was being preemptive on that. Um, she got a message that said we're in the we're on the recommended recommended list for doing ADA ramps all the way uptown Broadway, starting at the top of the hill on first there, go into six, any of the corners that need to aid. Some of them are bad and some of them are non-existent. And then there's a few on Main Street that needed up there also. Um, and then we'll catch the ones down here on Main when we do that, hopefully next year. Um, so that is in the works. Wayfinding signage, that's another thing that slipped by the wayside. Um, it just needs to be done. So we'll, that's, I don't know if that's a priority for you all um, as far as like to get started on in the next couple months or if we should just kind of keep that in the list. But we do, we want to put wayfinding signage for pedestrians and bicyclists. Like if you've been in Oregon City and you see how long it, it's like a five minute walk to get here or two minute bike ride or a 10 minute bike ride and a 30 minute walk or, you know, they'll tell you which directions to go. And um, we were going to do some of those around town. But that just needs to be done. Um, master planning of Campanella Park on the next page. That's beginning, and we're continuing to work with the school district on sports fields. Um, I know they're also working on the um, stadium, which they want to have done before graduation. That's a big project. Um, so we'll just see what we can do to, to make sure that anything they need from us, we're not bogging them down, um, whether it happens to be with the permitting or um, stormwater review. I think that's what they're working with Dawn on right now. Um, anyway, we'll make sure that we're helping them move forward as much as possible and staying in touch. Um, any questions so far? I'm kind of flying through this. I'm just kind of hitting highlights because I didn't want to go line by line. Okay. Um, the SCA grant at the bottom of, I know this isn't even numbered, but the bottom of that page under transportation um, we did receive the SCA grant for, like Don said, from the end of where, where the culvert paving ends right now all the way down to the shell station. Um, that will, that's terrible right now. And we got $100,000 from ODOT to help with that and to put sidewalks in where they're missing on the park side. On the other side, if we can afford it, we'll put a sidewalk. Otherwise, we'll just get that curb in there. Um, and so we have paving shoulder to shoulder there or curb to curb. Um, since it's, it could use it. Lots of traffic there. Yes, Councillor Lickey. Um, is it possible we can reach out to ODOT and ask them to fix what the, that center cross median thing that they messed up? The one where... Where they broke down the... It like, the it's like a Z or something? Yeah. No, uh, yeah they, uh, you can't uh, get a wheelchair oh. through there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, what you mean to change it from the Z pattern or... Yeah, just fix it where you can get a wheelchair through there. It's... We, uh, there's been several people that have uh, mobility uh, challenges in our city that have trouble getting through there. Oh, I will mention that to them. I, I think, uh, I, I know I got an email about it, but I, I don't know if the whole council got the whole, an email about it, but uh, yeah, there, okay. there's, there's been some complaints about it, so. Okay, I'll, I'll check into that because um, they didn't do it at the one by Elm. That's just a straight shot through, maybe because traffic is slower there. I'm not sure what they're, why they did it that way, but, you know, Vaughn and I took a walk down the highway and we're critiquing engineering, even though neither one of us are engineers, but um, it's, yeah, I'll check in with ODOT on that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Is that, I think it's supposed to second. Okay. All right. Public safety. And I think all of those 
um, that are, they conduct community meetings throughout the year, national night out, promote the neighborhood. I think all that can kind of get lumped under public safety committee, which we'll be working on in the next couple months to see how far we can carry that. Um, and under administration, develop a plan for ordinance review. I had highlighted and you prioritize, you know, making a plan for that. Uh, Councilor Dunsmere. I was just wondering if under public safety, uh, if we could add the goal to have a lighting audit conducted in 2022. Um, I just would like to see that sort of monitored this year to make sure that it gets done and then follow yeah. up on. That's a good spot for that. Okay. Joel? Um, since we're on the same line to that, might as well add the um, the one where we're going to review for what we can do about speed, whether it be speed bumps, signage, mm. radars, might as well add that in there as well. So, Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure, sometimes I write and I afterwards I'm like, why did I even write that? I can't read it. So, okay. <laughs> Um, moving on to the next, well, the next thing is the river, riverfront development, the very last page. Um, we do have a, a grant request out there from the Oregon State Marine Board, board that uh, Matt had submitted. And I think we got quite a bit of public comments on that because people were emailing, they were having a hard time turning them in. So they were emailing me. So I was kind of getting feedback on that. Um, it seemed like there was a lot of people that gave a comment. So we'll see where that goes. What that would do is take the lakeshore water access um, to 100% engineering complete. And then it's just coming up with a couple million dollars um, or finding a better Oops. way, you know, to somehow to fund that at the appropriate time in with all the other competing priorities that are going on. So that is, that's my rapid pace goal review. Any other comments, questions, or anything else to add in there? I appreciate you doing that as we kind of went along to Councilor Strobel. Well, great job and thank you for that. Did, did we have the uh, uh, water treatment plant updates on there too? I know Chris had mentioned that. It sounds like it's something. Yeah, we should add those we need in. To be looking at. Okay, yes, we can add those in. We're already working on the wastewater treatment plant, um, but I know uh, Chris has a lot of pressure to to be ready for that growth. And um, you know what he's doing. If we don't get a park done on time, that's a bummer. But it's it's we don't get the park done. But he has you know hard deadlines. So um, at some point in the future that we don't exactly know, but we know they're coming. So we'll add that in there too. All right, Councilor Litke. Um, I wanted to add a goal on to here based upon something that uh, Councilor Hughes said a couple meetings ago. Um, I know there's been a lot more division and, and uh, strife inside of the, the council here. And she made a point because we don't haven't had the chances to really kind of get together as a council and have some bonding time and, you know, chat and get to know each other better and stuff. I would like to see something in our, in our council goals where we make an effort, at least maybe on a quarterly basis to try to get together where as a council, we're there for the purpose of, you know, council uh, camaraderie or whatever you want to call it. It's basically we have a chance to kind of, you know, just talk and, and try to focus on building a council unionship. And if we have issues that are outside of council stuff, we can work those out there or something, you know, just to chat or whatever. So we, that way, when we're sitting in front of the, in the council, in front of people, we can, you know, we're on the same page and we're, we understand and, you know, we can try to, work together to keep moving forward and stuff, you know, cause that, uh, what, what Councilor Hughes said to me was really, you know, really meant a lot to me and really moved me a lot. And she had a good point on it. So, you know, I really like to see us as a council, try to, to, you know, to embrace that and try to, you know, move towards that. So. No, Katie? Thank you. Are we able to do something like that without violating ethics laws and um, meeting a quorum? I mean, we'd have to essentially do something like that in a public setting. Right, Melanie? Um, that's a good question. I don't know that we would, I don't, I have to look into that. Like, could we go, could we like 
get a super good deal on a escape room thing or something and do something fun all together? You know, I don't know. Um, or do we just, does it need to be sitting in the council room, you know, having um, maybe some snacks and, and do some team building um, types of activities? Um, we used to do that more on this um, during goal setting time. Um, we'd get together for a longer period of time and part of that would be kind of a team building kind of a thing. But so I don't, I'll check into that on what, what we could do. But I, you guys have been through the ringer over the past couple of years and it would be nice to just kind of take a breath and get to know each other a little more other than this little square right here. So yeah, yeah Council, Council Litke. Uh, I know there's got to be something out there because they have like the LOC conference and stuff where mm -hmm. tons of counselors go and they make quorums so just being there by it is. So there's got to be something, some sort of loophole we can get through to make mm -hmm. that work. So I don't know uh, who we'd call for that, but the LOC finds a way to make it work for our meeting. So maybe that may be a good place to call and ask them how they get through that. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll double check on that. And, and I think we've had community outreach where um, we've been out on the front lawn doing a barbecue or whatever the case may be, where we've had all the counselors there. And as long as we stay off council mm -hmm. business and, and, and concentrate on the relationship that we all have, I think we can get by without interrupting the ethics laws at all, as long as we yeah. stay within that, that boundary. Um, and I know, Katie, you've been through them with me. We did a lot of those back in the day. Uh, Justin, you've been there for a few of those. Jerry, I know you were. Um, I think Joel and Terry, you haven't had a chance to be in part of those and Paul, but we've done it quite a few times. So I think we can get around this. And I think we definitely need, how do I put this, airtime where we actually are out being free, talking with each other and, and having some pressure release. So yeah, I agree with all this. And I think you guys are all on the right track. So thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Um, the Next thing I had on there was a workshop development, and I just kind of would like, I'll read over the workshops that I had. Um, let's see if I have a last one. Um, coming up in PGE's franchise is up for renewal, so that'll be something we work with the attorney on. Um, and you'll need a workshop in that for that in February or March. We don't have a date locked down yet. The HNA presentation is gonna be February 28th, so that'll be a workshop. Um, you'll have the executive session interviews in March. Um, I don't know what those dates are exactly. I've kind of been out of the loop on that. Um, and then com the committees will bring their work plans for the year to you in April. So that will be a workshop. I'm not exactly sure how that looks because I um, haven't done that before. So that'll be in April and then budget committee in May. So that'll be an extra meeting for you. Um, so there's, there's some things coming up to keep you guys busy. Is there other workshops that you had in mind that, that we should prioritize out? Um, Councilor Lickie. Um, I mentioned this at the beginning of last year. I didn't see one during the year, so I wanted to kind of bring it up again. Uh, there's, and it's because mainly because I'm in the field, I know this type of things. There's been a heavy increase in uh, targeting or whaling is what they call it for in the cybersecurity field. Where you know, even to even on the emails I got the last couple of weeks, I saw a few uh, scam emails on there. So I think something where we get a um, kind of like a an executive's version of a of a uh, cybersecurity training, a couple of hours, just to kind of keep us aware of it. And it's very common in the field to 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 do that to give executives specific training on things to look out for and uh, kind of keep them awareness. That's it's awareness is really important because it you know it keeps your Kind of your mind open for it so um okay. something i'd like to see on that one so that'd be good i fell for one i clicked on it because i thought it was dropbox and dave piper is helping with way creek park but he's out of state right now and so i thought oh he must have tried to get into dropbox i need to make sure that that worked and i clicked on it and this thing popped up and went, ah and it was from by gig thank goodness it was a test i failed um so yeah, it's we, you have to be pretty on top of things. I don't click on it. It was just, I hadn't clicked on the wrong thing for a long time, so that was a good reminder, but it would be good to have some training, so noted. Um, anybody else? Councillor Dunsmere? Are we planning a follow-up follow workshop for the cannabis ordinances? Um, just because we did have 
the original workshop, I think back in November. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, November. And, yeah. And uh, I know that probably before we actually meet as a city council to approve any ordinance changes, we probably would benefit from having another workshop discussion before that time, at least to be able to talk about proposed changes that come from uh, city staff and then maybe even have our city attorney there because you mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. he's got some insight as to other uh, code amendments that we could make or zoning changes that we're going to need to make or whatever. So it would be yeah. nice to have a follow-up cannabis ordinances uh, workshop as well this year. Perfect. Yes. And we are getting, uh, getting him started on some recommendations for the ordinance. Um, but then we'll either have I mean, I'd kind of like to have him come. I know every time we have the the attorney come, it costs a little extra money, but sometimes that's definitely worth it. So um, we'll see what what his recommendations are based on um, your discussion previously, and then we'll decide if we just need to have a workshop with just the council or if we need to have him there to answer questions at the same time and do a workshop for that. Okay. All right, Councillor Litke. Um, just an idea that kind of popped in my head and, and you know, you know, come up before, but what if we had something like a community workshop? And I mean, that is where the council is there to discuss something, but we invite the community to join us and they can learn while, while we're trying to learn something or discuss something, they're right there with us in the same room. So therefore it gives us bonding with the community at that point, at the same time as we know, we're getting them maybe learning something it could be about you know understanding or reading ordinances or something i don't know it could be anything but it gives a chance for the for the council rather than just be someone they see sitting behind a desk in a meeting or they hear about or something where we're on a, a picture on a screen but the community is right there they're learning the same thing we are they're sitting with us we're all in the audience learning it together and it's a chance to bond as a council and the community um by doing something you know we're puts on the same level that way but would something like that seem kind of weird or is that something that we could look into? I think you're more like kind of a round table that includes the community or? Um, just something that involves the community. Yeah. I mean, we're there in there and it's not us sitting up here and them out there. It's we're All on the same together. plane. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Councilor Strobel. I was just gonna chime in the, uh, I think with the workshops, the community is invited to attend um, there's just no opportunities to participate uh, or to give input. So there's there's plenty of opportunity for them to be involved in them. But I see what you mean about, or at least I think I understand having having something with uh, us on the same same level. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, we'll add that to the list and uh, see what kind of ideas they can come up with and uh, run them back past you. Okay, Councillor Tenbush. That, that that seems like something that would be fairly hard to uh, hard to control. You'd, you'd almost have to have like an outside mediator or something uh, uh, facilitate. What's the right word? Is that? A facilitator. facilitator. Yeah, to to do something like that. So, I mean, I I, I, don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think we would have to definitely um, there'd have to be some structure to it uh, um, in order mm -hmm. for it to be successful. There, it would have to be structured. So. All right. And yeah, and feel free, you know, this is going to be, like you said, we'll do this again in a couple months, two or three months. Um, and the conversation will continue, but I think we've got some good, good direction. We'll just need to prioritize things. Um, anything else right now? Okay. You want to do the, um, the liaison assignments? Sure, that's a good time to put that in there. Okay, how do you feel those have been going? Is this is it a good structure where you attend the meeting, you know what's going on, report back to council? Yeah. Working out. Okay. Okay. Um. So we have. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you do this, Mayor. Do you want to just go down the list? And I, I started talking now. I can't stop. So. Sure, just uh, hit them with the list and we'll figure it out as we move okay. along here. All right, so we've got the Arts Commission. They meet on the first Wednesday of the month at 6.30. Councilor Tenbush, okay. Any any competition on that? No. Nope. Okay. 
All right, infrastructure meeting. That is gonna, we're gonna pick that up. We kind of dropped it over the past couple of years. Um, but we do, we meet at noon, typically on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, either, uh-oh. We've got two, we got Paul, yeah. we got just. Who wants to do that? It's honestly probably the only one I can really make. I can't make them after five. I have my daughter, so I think that's, that's the only one. Is that fine, yeah, Paul? Justin, go for it. Okay. All right, cool. All right, Justin. All right, Parks and Rec, fourth Wednesday at 7 p.m. And they are getting more active. Um, they're going to do a fun run on March 20th to raise some funds for Wade Creek Park 3. And they've got some really good creative ideas. Um, they're going to be working on the design of some parks, working with the community members. Okay, and what day is Wednesday, that? Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday. So I read... This, this committee is a really, really energetic and fun committee. Um, I just, uh, I feel like uh, this last year I might have overextended myself taking on three uh, liaisons. So um, if anybody else wants this, Kate, Katie was, Katie wanted it last year and I kind of jumped on it, but uh, um, hey, Jerry, if anybody else wants it. Katie, well, I, I really, I really, if nobody wants to fight me for it. I really want to stay on school board, but I can definitely take on Parks and Rec too if there's not a um, desire from Councillor Dunsmere. So Wednesday is going to be the best day for me to take on a committee, uh, better than Thursdays at least. So if I'm going to take on a committee, one of one that meets on Wednesdays would be the best. So all right. So okay. I guess we'll figure that as uh, what Joel? Well, that's a good question. Um, do what committees do we have that meets not Wednesdays or Thursdays? Because that's the ones I'm going to be available for. Um, the Downtown Estacada Commission is the first Monday at five, and the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee is the fourth Monday at one p.m. during the day. Okay, that's a little tricky too. Yeah, the, those ones I'm I'm more flexible for those two. So maybe the DEIC or something like that might be a good one for me because I can't do Wednesdays and Thursdays anymore. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry to jump ahead on that one. I just, yeah, that's, that's good, all right. And that's then, a good way to look at it is by the days. Well, I, I would like to continue on the DEIC um, also. Uh, so okay. I'd like to spread that one out a little bit too, this because Jerry, we gave that to you last time. But I yeah. like everybody to experience that because we all need to be. I understand. I understand that. that, but um, we they basically spent this whole year trying to figure out who they are, and now that they figured out who they are, I want to. I, I I did. We didn't actually get to get into anything. We didn't actually get to dig into anything. Now that they figured out who they are, I'd like to actually spend a year, um, you know, working on stuff, digging into stuff because I didn't have that opportunity this last year because they they did spend uh, a quite a quite a while just trying to figure out who they are so i mean my, the whole point of me joining that commission was to you know get in, get into this stuff and, and and help out and i'd really like to actually experience that part of it where i didn't get to experience that this this last year okay kitty on your parks and rec i think that would be a good one because you expressed yeah, interest so we'll, we'll make sure that happens right off the okay. bat Katie so on Parks away. and Rec. Okay. Yeah. I, and then, and I just ahead. wanted to throw my uh, name into the hat. If the DEIC is is up for debate, I guess uh, I would like to be considered as on that one as well. <laughs> is the DEIC is one that I was also interested in. Not that I want to take it away from uh, Councillor Tenbush, but uh, I do also have an interest in it. So I don't want to really move forward without making mm -hmm. sure that that was said. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. We could do maybe we could do like a like a move faster through that committee. You could trade out, you know, do like three months and then trade out three months, three months, or something like that. Or that kind of makes it less consistent, I guess. Um, I uh, Joel, do you got something to say? Uh, yeah. Well, on the DEIC. We're liaisons. We're not on the committee, so I don't see doesn't if it matters if Jerry's on there or Katie's on there or sorry, Councilor Tenbush or Councilor Dunsmere is on there because we're liaisons and they have just as much right to speak as a regular citizen does. And so if they have something to put into it, they can just even if they're not a liaison on there, they can still 
sit there and speak into the committee as a as a uh, as a anything as any other citizen could um, during that time to speak. But there, it's a liaison position; it's not sitting on there. So I'm a little confused by Council Ten Bushes as far as being part of the change on that one. But um, so I think you know, like Council Dunsmere or something being a liaison switching out every year is a good point um, that you mentioned earlier, Mayor. And so I don't think it really matters particularly on that type of case of sitting, who's sitting on there, because it's just to basically bring that information back to us as a council, not to actually make an effective change in that council and that committee, so. Hey, Paul, you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I was just gonna chime in. We started off uh, going through this, just offering up if you wanted to stay on the committee, like with the uh, SDK to Arts, uh, just allowing that to go forward. Uh, from a consistency standpoint, I kind of thought that's the way we were going. If you're on it, if you wanna stay on it, uh, continue if you're not able to. Uh, what other one can you take? Well, we Is like to not... move them around. We've never said that one person sits on that indefinitely. It's all counselors have an opportunity to participate in that group. Uh, we like to move them around. We always have every year. That's why we have this decision to make. Um, I would hope that different people would try out different things to get an idea. When I was a counselor, I had tried two or three at a time several different committees so I could get an opportunity to see how everybody thinks and see how everybody's evolving and see what committees are doing so I could get a better understanding. And then I ran for mayor and that helped me understand how some of these groups work. And I think that's really what we were doing when we first started this. And I'd like to keep with that, that we all try something different, that we all invest in these groups and, and show that we're interested in everything and not just one thing. So, um, that's why we're doing this ball and not because we've, you know, always done it. So if they're comfortable, leave them there. I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't work. We've got to invest in these groups with all of us. So we have all understand what we're, we're signed up for. So um, moving on, um, we've got three applicants. I don't know how we choose from all these mm. applicants for that, that we've never had that many people want to serve one, one group. Uh, what do you suggest, Melanie? What do we do? Why don't we why don't we get the other one? We got library board uh, just to procrastinate. Um, library board on Thursday. Anybody want to do library board? Uh, library board up. Oh, Thursday want? at five thirty. I've done it. I'm happy to do it. Happy to pick up something else though too. Okay, Paul's in for library. Uh, okay. Okay, and then. Um, the three are community partners, fire, fire district, school district, and the community center. Um, those are just really to attend and report back if you can. Um, I know some years we've done great at it. Some years have been too busy. Um, sure. Councilor Dunsmere. Yeah. They're all on uh, Thursdays, by the way. And I do agree that we need to talk about all of these, but I did want to mention um, before we made it too far that the one that is missing from this list is C4. Mm -hmm. oh. which and is that, I, it which is the first thursday of the month okay mm -hmm. and that one you actually like somebody has to actually be appointed to right yeah so i think it usually yeah. we've we've kind of do, uh, agreed who's going to be the nominee to to be at the committee and then the alternate as well uh we usually okay. decide that at this committee or at this uh meeting and then at the next council meeting we make the formal appointment as a matter of public record Okay. Yeah. And I've always done C4 as the mayor, and then I have an alternate is how that works. Out. And and I do not want to be the alternate this year. Thursdays have become very busy for me as well moving forward. So I, mm -hmm. I do not want to be the alternate this year. Okay. All right. So is everybody okay with the mayor being the regularly appointed person? And then do we have any volunteers for alternate? This is where you meet with the uh, county commissioners, is that right? Mm -hmm. And other cities? Yeah, all the other cities within the metro, plus the cities that are outside the metro. You got Sandy, Malala, and Estacada. So, yeah. what time is that one again? What? Yeah. Okay, that is. Oh, what time is this before? Is uh, it's it usually six? at six forty-five. On uh, what is it? Wednesday or what? What day is that, Kitty? Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's the Thursday. first thir first Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can I can take that I can do that or be the alternate. You want to be the alternate on that one? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with that? Are we all good? Okay, that's a good one. You'll learn a lot about transportation. 
and uh, <laughs> housing. housing needs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's a good one to be on. You get a lot of information on that one. God knows. And now um, is that so now at your next meeting you actually need to do a motion to approve. Motion to yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll for let that one. Know about that. Okay. Okay. So so far we've got Jerry on the Arts Commission, Justin with the infrastructure, Katie with Parks and Rec. Um Planning Commission doesn't get anybody, I don't think, because they bring it, they see it, and then they send it to you anyway. Yep. Is that, that's kind of think how it's gone? It has gone that way, but I, mean, I, I was the liaison have, last year. So. I was going to say, we've always had a liaison for that committee in the past. Have we? Okay. I can't do it going forward, though, because I okay. don't do okay. Thursdays anymore. Paul, you got your hand up? I could take that one on. Planning Commission. Okay. Planning. Okay. okay. Oh, you know what? You could go from one meeting to the next. Are you sure you want to do library then, Paul? Because Paul, the I have Paul for library board Thursday, fourth Thursday at five thirty, immediately followed by planning commission if they have a meeting. Yeah, we we usually yeah, not a problem. Okay, alrighty. <laughs> okay, then we kind of ignored the fire district, school district, community center. Do you guys want to have somebody officially? Well, I sat that. through the fire department this last year, and the things I ran into is they got they went into executive session practically every time I sat in on a meeting, and I can't go into executive session. And sometimes those executive sessions run for an hour where I'm sitting there on standby, and I can't say anything. I can't even be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I found it kind of hard to negotiate that system because I wasn't informed of things that they were making decisions on based upon their funding and who they needed and all that great kind of stuff. So it was really hard for me to report back to you when I'm sitting on this computer waiting to get back in from an executive session. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, unless they're out of that, that we really wanna sit in on that part of it. They, I know they're growing. I know they're doing a lot of stuff, but maybe there's another way we can meet with them. I know they do meetings on Tuesdays. They used to do coffee in the morning or something like mm -hmm. that. I, I'm not sure if they still do that. Mm -hmm. but maybe a way that we can meet with them and actually sit down and have a conversation mm -hmm. um, might be okay. a better way to do it. But I don't idea. know if we should discuss that with them, I guess, um, if we can get a meeting with them. Okay. Okay. Oh, Joel, did you have something you want to add to that? Hey, we invite the uh, law enforcement one to come in once a month and give a report. Why don't we see if we can try to invite the fire department to send a liaison over to, to give us a report once a month, see if they're up for that one. Same day we do the law enforcement. So maybe just be a kind of a fire and fire and police type of report mm -hmm. to the council once a month or something. To do, would that be meeting the same goals, do you think, Mayor? Or do you think that's going to take us outside of the goals we're looking for? Well, I think it depends on them, the fire department. I can't make an observation based upon what's good for us. I think we need to ask the fire department if that works for them. Um, I know they're all on different time. There's a lot of volunteers over there. There's a lot of things going on to get them in the room at one time. I mean, with their board yeah. and everything, or even somebody to report might be kind of difficult, but we can try. We can try. Maybe maybe we could do it or have a quarterly report from one of their board members or yeah um, uh, what well, my figuring is that if we give them a little time because they're still rebuilding i think they'll be ready to actually sit down with something more regular but until then yeah if you could get with them and, and we could see if they could report to us and that way we have a better understanding of what's happening without one of us spending a whole night trying to be yeah. on standby to get information yeah. true okay um I kind of feel that way about the school district and the community center too. Do I just have updates from them or do you guys want to be attending those meetings to get it back well, I in? I, I enjoyed attending the meetings. Um, I mean, there's a lot of information. Every time I attend a meeting, there's a ton of information. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's good to have somebody go. They're very consistent when they meet. Um, For the school? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Are they they are the second Thursday at seven p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I'd, Katie, I'd like to on stay it. on it, but um, I wanted to go back to the downtown Estacada Commission because it looks like we missed that one. Did someone? 
We yeah, we did. I kind of skipped that and the DEIC. Those were the they're both on a Monday. Um and I was just avoiding a arm wrestling match. Yeah. Okay. okay. Or rock, paper, scissors, or however we're gonna do it. <laughs> um so yeah, so Kate, so Charity, you want to stay on with the school board? Is that what you're Is saying? Anybody okay. else? Anybody um, else? Councillor Lickey? No, he's he's um, Councillor Lickey. I think is going for the DIC. Yeah, okay. one of the one of the Monday ones. I'll we'll raise my hand for it and then. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So this is how I've got it figured, um, because these are so popular, and and it looks like uh, you all want to do it. Um, the uh, downtown economic uh that's also on a monday right mm -hmm. joel you'd be willing to take that one uh yeah i'll take one or the other it doesn't matter which one i just i can only do a monday so okay why don't you go ahead and take that one okay that's fair enough right and then katie you were saying that you wanted the dic okay and i i think um that might I just want to clarify. We're uh, so I can do the one at one o'clock. I can't do the one at five o'clock because that's my last hour of work, and one o'clock is actually my lunch break. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So um, one o'clock is. Katie, if I could have Parks and Recs back, I will. I will give up DEIC. Um. Yeah. Because honestly, if we don't give him the DEIC, I guess you're still Estacada Area Arts, Arts right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to be honest, I would love to only have one commission assignment this year, if I could, just because, yeah. you know, I, I, this, this last year was really difficult with my, um, with my job and my kids, my kids are getting I older and I know that they're going to be taking on a lot more extracurricular activities this year as well. So if I could only have one liaison assignment, I would be appreciative of that. So yeah. and if, I think um, jury's agreed to that. So that would probably work out best. So I then I'll. That so then I'll do parks and rec on Wednesdays and then Jerry can keep the DEIC on Mondays. Is that right? Okay. Jerry? Does yep. That work? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. My, Mondays work best you know. for me. Cause I'm off. That's yes. right. you know, everybody Which, gets a chance to be a part of everything. That's what, right. all I cared about. Um, and if you're happy with that, I think everybody else is happy. Am I right? Does anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay. Justin, okay. you're down there. I don't think we've got any more. Um, you you kind of like to take it easy. I, I thought maybe I have the uh, infrastructure, He's which is good. like having yeah. has okay. not right. been meeting. Right. But I'm the only one that doesn't will. have one except for C4, and C4. that the reason I went like guys is not because I don't want to be a part of that anymore. It's because there are so many other meetings that I attend that are not on this list, and I know it, it's a lot, and it kills me. So for me to commit. And then have something come up where I'm in a meeting and, you know, it just, it, it, it puts a lot of pressure on me. I'm trying to ease off a little bit. Um, so the C4, I'd like to keep with just that one, if that's okay, um, going forward. And I think you're all very capable. You've done a great job. So you will continue to do so. I have no doubt. Um, is that all the groups we needed to cover, Melanie? I think it is. I think that unless somebody wants to attend community, that's kind of community center board meetings. I don't um, think we ever have. I don't. It's there 4.30 on the third Thursday. I don't think we necessarily have. I think it, I think anybody who wants to pop in there is welcome to. Okay. Um, yeah, that's. So I've got the Arts Commission for Jerry. Melanie, hold on just a second. Melanie, oh, okay. our, oh, uh, Katie, did you have something else? Just really quick, out of curiosity, um, the Performing Arts Group of Estacada, Page, are they a, a committee that, are, that has any sort of association with our city or no, no, no they're a completely separate entity? Okay, mm -hmm. I was just kind of curious because I'd love to see someone give an update on that one too. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, he used a... Uh well, I, I am a board member for a page, so I can, you know, if there's any updates, I can update the council if you guys want that information. Um, I am on that board, so I can do that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Um, you used to do it anyway. I, I, as I remember it, I, I remember hearing stuff. Joel. You know, um, and forgive me if I don't understand fully how it works. I know that we have, we, we seem to do a lot with the um, Chamber of Commerce. We hand them a bunch of money every year mm -hmm. and everything else and they're constantly reporting back to us, but we have no liaison to them. I'd like to, you know, see a liaison I mean, in maybe I'd like to better understand that relationship, honestly, because they're not a government aid, a entity. That they're in our city hall. We give them a big chunk of change every year. 
So I'm kind of confused about what goes on there because from my understanding, they're a nonprofit. Can can we get a clarification on that? And if not, can can if, you know can we? I'd like to either have more insight what's going on there from a liaison or better understand that relationship because I've been looking at it over the last year and I'm a little confused on how that relationship works. Because if they're just a standard nonprofit, then you know that's a little weird that we get that close to them as a city. But if they're not a nonprofit and they're actually some sort of government tie-in or something, then we should be looking at them like we do a committee. So can you can you clarify that maybe there, um, Melanie or something? Anybody? Yeah, I can't clarify it exactly right now, um, other than it's kind of been a standing arrangement that they had they do a lot with tourism um, that the city doesn't do necessarily. And so we've leaned on them for that. But that's a good, that's a very good question. Um, and as the city grows, at one concern that's coming up is we're going to need more office space, um, which could not be beneficial to the chamber because we've all, we've for, I don't know how long, ever since the little building out front was no longer there, I think the chamber's been inside City Hall. That's right. Um, yeah. And so um, that might be something we need. Maybe that's a workshop with with the Chamber of Commerce board and the city council board to figure out how you guys want to work together and what expectations are. Um, or maybe I could just get back to you with some information on, on the history and why we, why we are where we are and if there's a good reason for it going forward like this or whether we need to make sure. some changes. Okay, um, that, that might be good just to sit down and, and go through you know the procedure with the chamber and where we we've come to this point where we want to go with this where we want our relationship to continue with the chamber uh, and how that all plays out I, I think I'd like to do something like that with them and get an idea of what their their um, thought is on this because you know besides hearing a report from them what they're up to we really don't sit down with them I mean I remember I used to meet with the chamber all the time on a constant basis. I knew everything they were doing when they were doing it. And uh, I saw what the partnership was, but I haven't done that in a long time. So I'm not sure where that is at this point. Um, so maybe it'd be good for clarification. Okay. Um, any other hands? Okay, that's a good, that is a good question. I don't know, I don't remember when they meet. I think it's like an, I'd have to look it up, but if anybody, I could send that out to you and if anybody wants to volunteer to start attending that, I kind of think it's like from four to five. Joel, do you know already? No, okay. I was gonna say, um, if it's a day that I'm available to meet on, which is not Wednesdays or Thursdays, I'd be interested in, in okay. attending that, so. Okay. If you find out more, that is. Okay, I will find out some more and report back on that. All right, and then I wanna make sure I got these all right though. So we've got the mayor as the first and charity as the alternate for C4. Jerry with the Arts Commission, Justin with Infrastructure, Parks and Rec. I have many names scratched out. I think it ended up being Katie. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Planning Commission, Paul. Great, okay. And Library Board, Paul. Downtown Estacada Commission, first Monday at five with Joel. Is that right? Okay, and the DEI fourth Monday at one is Jerry. Okay, we're gonna try to get um, a report back or some kind of connection with the fire district other than attending their meetings and then Charity's gonna attend the school district board meetings. Is that everything? I think so. Okay. Does that sound right, everybody? Uh, we're missing anything, everybody's content? Yeah, Katie? Um, was there any benefit to me attending the Estacada Area Connect uh, meetings that happen uh, quarterly? Um, that's the, the group that's in Estacada that's made up of all like the nonprofits and stuff. Was there a benefit that you guys saw? Um, I know that they only met quarterly and there wasn't a lot going on, but I guess I just wanted to throw that out there and make sure that that didn't just miss everybody's radar. I don't know if I'd be able to do it again as a li liaison this year, but uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there that that might be one more group that we might want to have a liaison at least attending their quarterly meetings. 
uh, Councillor Litke, that it does seem like it might be something up your alley being uh, with the nonprofits, if that was something that you might be able to attend. Mm -hmm. I honestly cannot remember the exact dates, but uh, it being a quarterly meeting and during the daytime, don't know if that's something you're interested in. Uh, yeah, I can uh, definitely uh, definitely look into, if you can give me the date and it works out, I can definitely attend to that and bring some information back. Um, I know that it, they've had some uh, some meetings that have been decent on there from what I've heard. Um, mm -hmm. We have people from uh, the nonprofit I'm involved with uh, attend there on occasion, so. Okay. I can check on that, on the date. Um, I have it attended over the years off and on. It seems like it, um, I don't always have a lot to contribute because it's a lot of social services. It's great for them to connect and they hear what each other's doing and how they can be involved. And um, there, I think that's maybe how the red, not red barn, but the um, Head Start building kind of started back up again because they mm -hmm. became aware of it through that meeting. Um, and so I think they do a lot of good work, but it, it sometimes it's, it's not a lot of connection, but it, you never know, you know, something can pop up and it's very helpful. So yeah, um, I could try to start attending that. Also, I haven't for the last little while, but I'm gonna even things out here, I think. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or thoughts? No, nope, I think we covered it all. Okay, wow. <laughs> the time just keeps going by. Um, okay, we did the liaison assignments, the interim city manager report. Are we ready for that? Oh yes, give okay. me what you got. Okay, I don't have a lot, but I just wanted to say thank you for entrusting that to me. Um, when I went back to school a few years ago and finished out my bachelor's degree, that was kind of my goal was that as we had transition time that I could fill this gap and that I would be qualified to do that. Um, and so thank you for allowing me to do so. Um, I wanted to find out the best way to contact you. I know that we have email, but um, like for instance, a couple of days ago when we said, hey, we should get lunch. You know, they're going to sit here for four hours. We should get them some lunch at least. Um, and so then we were texting and calling. And is that is that okay? Texting, call, calling. Do you have a preference on that? We won't we won't talk about business on text um, or council business or anything. But just to you know confirm just little mm -hmm. things. Or well, I think you have a pretty savvy room here on texting and stuff. Yes. So yes. I think you can handle it. Text is good. Okay. Yeah. Or if something needs to be like, if we needed to email you something to shoot you a text and say, hey, there's something in your email that's urgent or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that works good. Uh, Joel, okay. did you have something else? Uh, she just said it, but um, in our nonprofit, that's actually a trick that we use because no one's monitoring their email all the time. Um, it's so if you're going to send an email and you would like us to focus on it, usually a text message out to the okay. all our nonprofit leaders, that's how we get them to look at it and it, it works really well. So, okay. All right. Sounds good. I was also thinking of doing um, a little Friday report, just in, in case anything of interest came up during the week or what we'd worked on. I know um, Bill Elliott. He used to do that. Yeah. Yes. He used to send your report every Friday. And yeah. I don't know, um, you know, sometimes it was probably long. and Sometimes it was just a few sentences. Um, but if you knew you could count on that on Fridays, if that would be helpful. Um, yeah, that's nice. You could it wouldn't be urgent. It would just be, you know, to, and I'm kind of a bullet list kind of a person. So I don't sure. write a novel, but you can no, That's okay. Just a short little okay. note. I okay. think in the summertime too, we speed up around the city. So things are happening more mm -hmm. frequently than they are in the wintertime. Right. So, you know, maybe January, February, things are quieter unless we have a weather catastrophe, which sometimes happens. But other yeah. than that, and then in the okay. summertime, we start amping it up and there's a lot more going on. So those Friday reports really help us keep okay. track of what's going on during the week, what was accomplished, right. what wasn't. Right. So you don't, nothing surprises you if, if something went on. No. Okay. All right. I will work on that, doing that um, over the next couple months. And then um, I kind of would like to, I'd like to connect with each of you be, uh, before a council meeting. Um, so like the Friday before a council meeting to have a phone call or um, maybe on Monday, you know, even before the Monday before the meeting, if you, that way we could kind of run through the agenda real quick. And if you have any questions, 
I could either answer them or I could know that I need to find an answer for them. Um, I know Denise was amazing. You could ask her anything and she might say, I'll get back to you on that, but she already knew. She remembered everything. And so, um, and I don't necessarily do that and I don't have the scope of reference to draw from that she does. Um, and I just thought that might be helpful if you are interested in, in doing that, we could schedule a time that's a good time for you. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Joel, did you have a question? Um, I really like the idea before, you know, before the, the, like the Monday before, before basically the agenda goes out. So that way, if you call and there's a question we have or something else, you can either make it a quick adjustment or something to the agenda. Okay you know, add something, add additional information to it or something like that. You know, I think that might be a good idea. Okay. So not just before the meeting, but also when we're. Um, I, I think just like the, before the agenda comes out. So that okay. way, like I said, if there's a question or something we have, you're like, oh, I didn't think about that. We can add that into the packet or something like that. Okay. So yeah, Paul. I was thinking uh, kind of the opposite there. I was thinking uh, once we get the packet, we've had a chance to go through it. So maybe the Friday before or something like that, that would be a good time just to get clarification. If we want something in the packet, um, you know, that we could, we can always call ahead of time and get that done. But I, I think it'd be a productive session to, to spend our time going through any questions, any concerns that we might have uh, based on what's been sent out in the packet. So Charity, you had something? Uh, just actually what uh, Councillor Stribble is going to say, I wouldn't mind, a, you know, like a phone call uh, the Friday before, you know, once we get the packet, just go through. And that way, because um, sometimes I might have a question or something that maybe the other counselors know the answer to, or, you know, I just don't want to like hold up the works. Um, that way we can just keep things kind of, kind of rolling. And then if community members have come to us, then we can if we need to add something or address it during the meeting that can get added on. So yeah, I like that idea a lot. Okay. okay. Joel, one more time. I, I withdraw my idea. I like their guys that convinced me. <laughs> okay. okay. All, All right. right. I'll, send a, I'll send out like a, an email reminding you or but maybe let me know what's a good time. I was thinking of doing um, lately, our, I've been sticking with the hour seven to 5.30 Monday through Thursday. And I'll glance at something on the weekend, but try to stay away from it. Um, so I think in doing more like eight to five thirty, and saving that that extra morning hour for doing some work on Fridays or the council meetings or something like that. So I'll shoot you an email, and if there's a good time on Friday, or like Jerry doesn't work on Monday, if you'd rather have me call you on Monday, um, you know we'll set up a time, and that way we don't have to necessarily be bound to that, but it might help you to plan, you know, and help me not to call in the middle of something you're doing and then what would be a good time for our meeting that we yes. actually set the agenda um, yeah when that would that be good for you would you want to continue with mondays or how do you want to do it hmm. mondays are fine um we, i think the agenda has to be done by the thursday like a week and a half before kind of but mondays mondays it works good for me so we could you know figure out what if morning or afternoon is better okay either one is fine with me yeah Sounds That'd be good. great. Yep. Okay. Um, best way to connect with other staff is still their desk phones. Um, because if you call their cell phone, then maybe they're on a vacation day or something and you didn't know that. And, um, so if you call the desk phone, that's great. We are considering, I think I need to do some research. Um, there's a way, like I think it's VOIP where it goes through their computer or something. So if they're, if it's a work from home day, even if you call their desk phone if they can answer it at home. I don't know how that works exactly. Um, but I'd like to do that so that if they're if they are working from home, you can still call a consistent number and get through to them. So we'll work on that. Um, Councillor Lickey. Uh, could you send out a summarized list of you know uh, who our staff is and the, their contact if for desk phone numbers and things you know. Yep. So that might be helpful too. Okay. I will do that. And okay. Melanie, just to just to let you know too that there are ways on phone systems just to hit a button that transfers to their cell phone. That's how we kind of do it at my work if we're out and still trying to answer oh. phone calls. Okay. So you could try to do something like that in the interim of finding something else, but it's pretty okay. simple to set up on phone systems. That's great because then they don't have to forward it to their phone because then they might 
get a cell phone call at eight o'clock at night from somebody, but if it could transfer, they we could transfer it to their cell phone. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to be looking in on that. Um, oh, one thing we didn't touch on during community development was code enforcement. I emailed you her report because I neglected to get it into the packet. Um, she's basically here two days a week and she gets so much done. I can't even tell you. And people are not, unfortunately, not very nice to her a lot of times. Um, and I think, you know, just it's never pleasant to have somebody tell you you need to correct something that you're doing. Um, and so, and I've, I've gotten a letter from the county before, and I even know the process. I know how it goes, and it still gives me that, like, pit in my stomach, like, ah, code enforcement. Um, and so she handles it really well, and she, um, I think she mentioned in her report, she still hasn't had to go to court with anybody. She finds ways to get it worked out. She works with our deputy. She works with Ant Farm. Um, and so... There's definitely some ongoing issues, but I think she's doing a great job. And if you ever want to give feedback on that, um, kind of that department and how we're handling things proactively, just let me know or whoever would know. Um, yeah. Councilor Litke. Um, I noticed that the two big things I think were uh, like kind of uh, trees slash mm -hmm. bushes, an issue, I forgot how she wanted it, and then parking. Weeds and, yeah, weeds and noxious yeah. growth and parking. Can we get more details on those? Because maybe there's something we can do from a council to help with that. If it's something, if there's an issue that's causing people to park illegally somewhere or something that we can try to do to help mm -hmm. maybe reduce that or help, whether it's a better some, signage or I don't, I don't know what the situation yeah. would be, but. Do some education it, on it. Yeah. Something, if we can get better, better uh, details on what those, are break it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, yeah, just to kind of let you know, the weeds and noxious growth is just kind of a, it's just a yearly thing. Some people are always on top of it and other people always are not. And they just take send in a letter and they're like, okay, I need to mow my alley or, um, you know, whatever that it's a reminder. Um, although she doesn't feel that's her job to be a property manager. And I kind of agree with that, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, and then the parking, a lot of times it's problem. It's not like everywhere. It's not everybody. It's people that have expired tags on cars that they're just hanging on to. And so they sit on the street for too long or RVs are kind of an issue um, because you know, you're camping out somewhere and you don't want to put it back in storage and get it out. And we have, there's a 72 hour limit. If you, if you want to leave it on the street, um, just for neighborhood livability, really. Um, anyway, that's kind of, I would say those are the hot topics. Councilor Lickey. Um, well, yeah. And for example, I was talking about is there was a big thing with the weeds and noxious growth we had a, a few months back. Mm -hmm. And so we brought it before the council. We talked about it. We made some changes to the ordinance. Like mm -hmm. I'd be kind of curious to see if that's, if she could tell the difference in an effect there or those, those kind of things. And mm -hmm. so, um, the so that's what, yeah, yeah and I'm just, you know, for example, if it's an RV thing, if, you know, if it would make sense to add a day, like make it, you know, 96 hours, if that would cut out some of the problems and be a good compromise between this, the citizens and the, and the, the, the city or something. I mean, I don't know the answer mm -hmm. to all these issues, but yeah. just something we could look at where we could find ways that people aren't going to be feel like she's, you know, constantly stepping on their, you know, stepping on their next type of thing, but at the same time you know, the citizens feel like we're listening to them. We're understanding both sides of it and, you know, maybe make her job a little easier. Obviously we're getting a lot of parking violations. What's there. Can we, can we look at to see that's either going to help them education, like you said, or something we can change an ordinance maybe, or I don't know. So one of the ordinances that we probably will bring to you is that um, adding in the Clackamas County tow ordinance, because right now it's, it's, we have to be very careful on what gets towed. Um, and that sounds terrible to say, well, we could solve this problem if we just towed more cars. Um, but there are some cars that are, they're slightly abandoned. They do belong to somebody, but they're not being used and they're not, they don't have current tags and they're, they may not even run. Um, and it's hard. It, so that may be one thing that would help get a handle that section. But then, yeah, maybe there's other parts we can look at where um, we allow more or less and it helps to solve some problems. So. Take a look at that. Okay. okay. And the last thing, um, I put in your packet your council rules, which I think you already have um, access to very easily. But 
I just wanted to go over because I'm kind of learning. I am not a parliamentarian um, who's an expert at Robert's Rules of Orders, but it does say in your um, <clears throat> in your council rules it has like rules of debate and how the how the structure goes. And I feel like <clears throat> sometimes like when you're trying to like walk past somebody and you're like you go both go the same way and then you both go the same way this way and if there's just some lines on the ground that said if you're going this way you walk here if you're going this way you walk here then I wouldn't run into all these people um, and I feel like <clears throat> the rules of how how a formal meeting is structured is kind of helpful like that it might save some time and it might um, help be more productive and so um, the rules of the de debate are just in your council rules and um, there, it, some of them are interesting. We don't really use a, them a lot, like the motion to table something. Um, you don't, you can't debate it. If something's been going. You guys don't have this necessarily come up very often, where it goes on and on and on. And somebody might say, "Okay, I move to table this." Um, and then if it if there's if it prevails, if there's a majority vote, then it's taken off. Um, you stop talking about it. You put it on the next agenda. Um, at the next regular meeting and then you and sometimes that might be helpful um, I haven't really seen that happen with you guys but there's some you know there's just some there's rules in there and then um, I added in also um, what did I, I know, there's the council oh social media and the rules this is on a side note just, I encourage you to be careful. I have like this love hate thing with social media because I like to stay in touch with people. Um, but I also, I be careful where I go because it can raise my blood pressure a little bit. And it, and if and if you um, are getting bombarded by people on your social media, um, if they just call city hall or send us an email, you know, we're oftentimes, it's very easy to talk with them about it and kind of get something resolved. Um, but they feel a need to really kind of blow things out of proportion on social media, um, which then just makes a lot of people upset. And we were, you know, it's maybe something that's really easy for us to solve. We just hadn't, as staff, you know, it hadn't come up yet. And so we didn't do it. Um, but we are very happy to talk with people if they're calling you um, and have concerns and they're putting things on social media. Um, we would just love it if they would, you know, feel comfortable to, Come to City Hall or call City Hall and we'll talk to them. Um, and then I also included a little cheat sheet about how to introduce new business, which is kind of different than I think we do things typically. Typically we talk about it and then when we get done talking about it, then somebody makes a motion and then there's a second and then we vote and it kind of goes really fast right at the end. But the way I was reading this is it sounds like you come up to your topic that's on the agenda and you somebody will move to whatever the, you know, whatever I moved to um, adopt the, the design for Campanella Park. And then somebody will second it. And at that point, um, the discussion can start and you can talk about it as long as you want and really figure it out. You can go back and amend that motion or you can recall it. Um, and then, and the person who makes them, this was interesting, um, the person who makes the motion is the one who starts the discussion. So if you if you don't want to talk about it, then wait for somebody else to you know to start the discussion. Because if you're going to make that motion, then you're going to be the first one the mayor calls on to start the discussion. And then you know everybody gets to talk once. You go back and talk twice. But we don't really have. I don't feel like we don't have an issue where people are um, kind of grandstanding on things, which I think can happen at some you know in some boards. Um, but anyway, there's, I thought those, I don't know, they might be helpful. It might just help us to have the order. And then Sadie came up with the last one. That's pretty cool. Um, big mistakes or inappropriate remarks and how, it's like, you know, in the courtroom when they say, um, uh, what do they say when somebody does something they're not supposed to do? I can't Out of remember. order? <laughs> uh, yeah, or the, um, I don't know, objection. They have an objection, right? Objection. And so you don't say objection, you just say point of order. And then you say, well, like um, if somebody was speaking twice in a row, oh God forbid, um, point of order, the member's spoken twice. And it kind of gives you a little like how to handle things. And I think just sometimes following those rules 
slows down the conversation because I have a tendency when I get in a group, we, you know, everybody just talks, you go back and forth and talk, talk, talk. And so if we have these order points of order that we follow, um, I don't want to bog down in Robert's rules of order because they have so many details. I, I, I think it would be not helpful to us, um, but just kind of to consider how we, how we use those, or if there are any questions or any other comments, or do you think I'm misinterpreting something or? Well, Melanie, I think you're spot on. Uh, these are all issues that we've dealt with this last year. Like you said, there's been a lot of pressure out there that isn't normal. I can tell you on everybody. I mean, depends on you. Know, we could go into storms. We could go into arguments over uh, uh, other things in town that yeah. have happened. But I think it really amounts to a lot more pressure than we've ever dealt with uh, back and forth between counselors. There's been a little tension. So, you know, I could I could get into this, um, but I think I'll leave that to them and, and they can deal with this. But what I want to say is, um, as the mayor, um, I have probably dropped the ball more than anybody. Uh, you counselors are doing what what you should be doing. I, I, I should have been more um, stern in my decisions when when uh, allowing speaking during a council meeting interruptions. I've allowed a lot of things that I wouldn't normally have done. And I should have followed the Roberts Rules of Order, which is to say, gavel down, you know, stop the argument, stop the thing. And I haven't done that. And that's on me. So I need to correct that. That's not on you. Um, but from here out, I want you to know, I'm going to be very avid during these conversations to allowing what I'm supposed to allow according to Robert's rules of order and when I'm supposed to gavel and when I'm supposed to do this because that's what keeps us in line so we don't get out of control and that's, that's on me. So I, I promise you that I will do my part to make this better. And then from there, you've all heard what Melanie said. Is there any questions as to what she said, uh, Katie? Um, in every council packet that we receive, um, we include the um, public rules for discussion or, or the, you know, how the, the public is supposed to uh, essentially work within our city council meetings. Um, can we just include the city council rules uh, every packet, just like we do for the public rules? We could, we could do that. You want them in the packet or we could like laminate a, a cue card or a cheat sheet and have it at your desk there or do you want everybody mm -hmm. to see it that's, in the packet each time i mean that's that not be helpful if we're on zoom oh, <laughs> that's right so, i forget so that's why i'm okay. like well maybe if we could do it in the packet every time i mean um, i realize it. that it could potentially add more to the amount of pages that we have in each packet but or just um, send it out with the packet really helpful you know, mm -hmm. just because I, you know, obviously I've had um, a, a community member put on paper that I make motions out of order, but if they knew Robert's rules, they would know that actually in order to have discussion, you have to have a motion first. So um, it would be really nice if we could include that in the packet would be nice. Charity, go ahead. Yeah, I'm. Thanks, Melanie, for adding this in. Um, and it's a it's a nice refresher. I've noticed that when I've attended the school board meetings, they are very strict in adhering to the Roberts Rules of Order, and they get through a ton of business very very quickly. And they're still able to have discussion about it. And I don't get the sense. I mean, it's all business. I don't get a sense of divisiveness amongst their any board members or anything. There's just this is the agenda. This is what's on it. We're going to, you know, either approve it, not approve it, have a bit of discussion, move on to the next item. And um, things tend to flow really, really well, and they get a lot done. I'm, I'm really impressed. So um, yeah, I know we've been a little more, and it's hard to when we meet on Zoom, things get a little more loosey goosey. And it's hard to like, you know, wave at the screen, like I'm over here, don't forget me. But um, but it's just, it's a good reminder. And I think, um, yeah, it's a good reminder for us all because sometimes I forget these things. So, and I like what Katie, I like the little either cheat sheet, whether when we're meeting in person or um, via Zoom, if we can just maybe have that added in because sometimes I, I kind of forget, you know, the rules a little bit. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I, I will say, um, Councillor Strobel and I had a little, just, he just, then maybe we should, I should look at this. And that was helpful because I, I'm on a couple of, I've been on other boards. One is really casual and 
one is um, they do they do it just like that, and I didn't really recognize it because that's the rules. Um, and so thank you, Councillor Strubel, for bringing that up. And I think we'll all we'll get better at it. We'll get we got stuff to get done, right? And, okay. I just wanted to chime in. Uh, appreciate you putting those in. I don't know what Robert's rules of order are either, but I see everyone out there says we need to be following them. So this is a good refresher for me. So mayor, by all means, we will do our best to back you up on this. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I think Melanie did a great job. I think we're all entering the end of this uh, meeting day. Uh, you've accomplished a lot. You did some great work. I'm glad you are our interim uh, city manager as yeah, thank you. the fact that you know everything that's happening out there and we are able to understand exactly where it is we need to go so again we appreciate you I appreciate every one of you counselors for the time and effort you put into everything that we do um, I know it's hard and sometimes it gets monotonous and sometimes you go home drained and feel like you you don't want to do it anymore I get that I get that more than anybody um, there are days I feel that way as the mayor so don't feel bad we do a lot and, and you deserve a lot of credit. The city's beautiful and it's getting better and it's operating smoothly and things are happening. And, you know, it's, it, it's going to get even better. So we appreciate all of you today and everything that you've done and, and the fact that you've made time to be a part of this. So, and we thank staff for the wonderful lunch and everything that went with it. And Melanie, you do a great job. I can't tell you enough. Trust me. Thank so. you. All right, I think you're down to mayor and councilor comments. If anybody had any last All right, things, you'll get comments. out of here early. We'll start off with Paul. You're up to my left, so I'm going to start with you. I just I just want to say, looking over everything that we've got to do this year, last year I felt overwhelmed. Um, it was my first year of, of being on council. This year, um, I think I'm more excited. We've got yeah. a lot of really good things coming up here and really looking forward to working with you all. We're looking forward to getting a, a new city manager in, working with Melanie. In the meantime, I want to continue to work with Melanie moving forward. But, you know, really appreciate the staff looking forward to all that we can do and accomplish uh, in 2022. Thank you, Paul. Charity. Yeah, Melanie, just want to say really, really appreciate you. I um, appreciate you stepping up into that role of city manager, interim city manager. Um, not, you know, that's it's different than being an assistant. So appreciate you just kind of taking that burden upon yourself. And I, I think you'll, you're going to be great. And we, you know, I think we're all fans of yours anyway. So, um, and then just also want to thank my fellow counselors and mayor, um, for you know, just committing your time and energy into the community. And I really do respect every single one of you. I really do. It's a thankless job. And I'm learning that more and more <laughs> as, as time goes by, but um, it, it does pay off in other ways. And so I uh, just appreciate all of you. I, get, I look forward to getting to know you guys better this coming year. I'm hoping coming, we're kind of coming out of COVID things and can, uh, find ways to do some team bonding building. I, I like that idea from Councillor Litkey and um, I think that would be good for us. So uh, yeah, I look forward to this coming year and seeing what we can do as counselors, mayor, staff and how we can continue to better our community. Thank you, Charity. Uh, Jerry. Um, again, I know I said it earlier, Melanie, but congratulations. I'm excited to see. Um, you know, excited to see you in this spot, even if it's only interim. Um, make sure you point, uh, pass on to the to Donald and to Chris and to Taylor and and all of city staff um, our appreciation for the the work that they put in. Um, I, some people say that uh, your pat on the back is your paycheck, but I feel like our city staff goes above and beyond. Um, Public Works goes above and beyond, and uh, they deserve a big pat on the back for the amount of work and the effort that they put in. Um, we can't do this without them. This city is not this city without this staff and this, you know, the Public Works Department. So um, I really appreciate the, you know, everything that they do for us and for the city. So um, thank you guys for a, a pleasant meeting. It was, uh, um, it was nice to not have uh, the 
you know, the back and forth, you know, the arguments, it was really nice to not have that. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm sorry that I've been a part of that in the past and I'm going to, I'm going to do better myself to, uh, you know, hold my emotion back. Um, I'm a passionate person. And uh, when I get passionate about something, uh, the wrong side of my emotions come out. Um, but I'm working on that, and I, I think I've, I've I've shown over the last month that I, I've got I've gained some restraint, and I've uh, really been trying and working on it, trying to be a, a you know just better at that. So, but I appreciate you guys. Thanks for your time, and uh, um, thanks again. Thank you, Jerry. Katie. Cheers to 2022, you guys. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Joel. Oh, I'm uh, I'm nice and excited about 2022. We think we got a lot of good things on the goals, and um, I'm excited to have Melanie in here as our interim. She's been putting up with me before, since before I was a counselor, all the way back to all the uh, craziness, the fires. Um, but uh, she's yeah, still so, putting up with you, Joe. Yeah, she still is. <laughs> and uh, you know, hopefully, she'll continue to put up with me for as long as I'm here, and and then even when when I'm outside of council one day. But at the same time, it's it's been it's been great. Um, we I think we learned a lot over the last year um, about some things we can improve on and things we did really well. Um, and I'm looking forward to you know having a new shot uh, this year to improve council relations, have some good projects come in, see projects we've been working on since even before I was here start to come to fruition. Um, yeah, and especially more than anything, see it starting to come out of this the fires damage, which you know I'm really excited about. ODOT saying that they're hoping to open up for the season. I'm sure a lot of businesses are excited about that too, um, as well as coming out of the COVID and, uh, you know, really starting to take it to a new level. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, sun shining and days are great and look forward to what's coming. Great. Uh, Justin. I thought I was going to keep it the shortest, but I think Katie won. Uh, just <laughs> echoing, <laughs> just echoing everybody else. Appreciate the staff. Uh, excited to see you take control there, Melanie. I think there's some great things. Uh, just excited about 2022. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and uh, you've already heard enough from me, but yeah, uh, staff, 100%. Let them know. Let them know every chance you get how great they are. So again, guys, we thank you for giving us your time today. And this workshop is now closed. Just want to say that's the first time I've ever been the shortest of anyone. Hey, char <laughs> Charity. <laughs> Charity, I've been meaning to ask what the cutout of the person on your door. What what is that? So I'm in my I'm over at my 